It's round 21 at Monica Oval. A big day for the GWS Giants and the Melbourne Football Club. Absolutely beautiful conditions here in the nation's capital. It's sunny. There's a light breeze going across. I've got a legend next to me. He's the game's record holder. Just a lazy 364 games, if you don't mind, with the Western Bulldogs, Brad Johnson. Now, John, when we landed in Canberra this morning, it was five degrees. I'm thinking it hasn't really gone up that much. No, I think it's dropped to about 4.5 <laughs> and it's going to go down as the day continues. What we will see today is the players not stop moving because of how cold it is here in Canberra. Well they tell me it snowed in the middle of town yesterday. Yes. That's the sort of weather we're having. But it is, it's a beautiful surface. We have got some decent weather. It is round 21. We've got a couple of cellar dwellers that are playing. And let's be brutally honest. We've got uh, last position and third last position. What are we expecting from them today? Well I think it'll be a close contest in the first half. GWS, well they, they always compete and, they, and they'll have a go at the contest. I think that'll last for a half today with the players they do have out of the side. Then Melbourne should get on top in the second half of this game today. Well, we've got a, a smallish crowd, but it's building as we see Melbourne taking the field. They've just got three wins today. It's been a horror season for the Ds. And with the contentious issue of tanking again rearing its ugly head, they'll be pretty keen to put a very strong performance on the board today. I mean, win number four beckons, but a slip up today, I think, could prove absolutely catastrophic for the Melbourne Football Club. I don't know if you've seen a lot of their form, Jono, but gee, I, I honestly think they have been disappointing and most people tend to sort of see things the same way. It's hard to make too many excuses for them. Well, at the start of the year, I think they were in that mix of finishing between, say, 7 and 10 on the ladder. They yep. were in the talk with the, with the Tigers and the Kangaroos uh, that have gone reasonably well this year. So the drop-off was probably unexpected. So they'll be looking to finish off strong, as all sides do, try to finish off strong so they can take at least something into the summer. And what do you put it down to? I mean, do they? is it a lack of depth on the list? Oh, look, I'm not sure whether it's a huge uh, lack of depth on the list. They have got enough depth there, yep. but really it's just confidence and they need to continue to try and build on that as the, as the last three rounds unfold. All right, Lee Colbert's with us today and he's caught up with Melbourne coach Mark Neal. Mark, welcome to Canberra. Uh, nice sunny conditions. Looking forward to a, a good contest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a little bit better than what we thought, the conditions, so that's a bonus. But the same as you, mate, we're looking forward to have a, a fierce contest against the Giants. What can we expect? Uh, Blees last week was exceptional, wasn't he? Five goals. Um, good to see him coming along as a player. Who else are we going to expect today to, to really improve? Yeah, look, as you know, we've got a, a, a really young side. Guys like Sam Blees, Tom McDonald down back, our two captains in Grimes and Trengove. We think that they've had pretty consistent years and and guys like Blees that you mentioned, it, it, what we're after is consistency of effort. We know that's difficult with, you know, 20 game players, but yeah, just to bring some, you know, fierceness to the contest, mate, is what we're after today. All the very best. Uh, enjoy these Canberra conditions and hopefully a smile at the end of the game. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, buddy. See you, mate. So there's the Melbourne lineup. Interesting that Jack Watts, Jono, would be the substitute today. Yeah, coming back from injury, so looking to ease him into the contest. We'll play probably more in the second half if they don't have any injuries. And you see the man on screen there, um, or the Giants going through, you see Brad Green in the background there. He's been finding the goal since announcing his retirement, Jay. So mm -hmm. he's, he's probably taking the shackles off and enjoying his footy in the last month of football. Well, I can see a man lurking right next to us. We might as well bring him in right now. He's the coach of the GWS Giants. Jeez, thanks for your time smiling this afternoon. The smiling assassin comes to camera. Eh? Oh, I love it up here, Sheeds. Unbelievable. Sheeds, it's killing. I've, I've never seen been, you coated up. I've been away for a few weeks. I've only been back a few days, and all I keep hearing about is your coaching mortality and the fact that they've already decided the end of next year. Yeah. Is that decided? I have no idea. But listen, <laughs> it's all fun. It's a circus. We all know that. Yeah, What's absolutely it, it is. not yeah. We get to this stage of the year, you've got a list that's starting to run a bit thin, you've wound up a few players, it does take its toll on a young group. What are you telling them at this time of the year? What are you expecting from them? Oh, look, we just want their best effort, there's no doubt about that. I mean, last week we had uh, a six-game player kick five goals in a losing side, yep. Will hosking mm. Uh That's just fantastic. I mean, you know, I talk to the boys about grabbing every opportunity you can in the first 10 to 20 games of your life. And, uh, you know, we're, as a club, we've got six hours to go for the season. And we've got an opportunity to win this game here. They've got a terrific uh, following here in Canberra at the present time. And so, you know, we want to get off to a good start. Obviously, last week, um, Melbourne did against yep. the Gold Coast. And we've got to make sure that doesn't happen. Well, we're looking at the line-up here. Now, there's a bit of experience down the middle of the ground. Obviously, it's a big day for Luke Power playing game number 300. But any uh, anything else you can tell us about the line-up there? Oh, our line-up's um, obviously uh, a bit thin at, in the forward line. We're very inexperienced. I think we've got about 60-odd games in our forward line, so we've got to get it in with a bit of uh, smartness and awareness. But uh, well, once again, I mean, if we can kick sort of 12 goals, it puts us in the game. And uh, 
the last couple of weeks uh, we've kicked about, say, 25 to 30 goals. That's a pretty good effort for us. It is, and get a win today. I'd like to see you get another Powerade shower like you copped yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> it's a very stinging, stinging effect on your eyes, I can tell you. I have no idea about that. Cheers, we appreciate your time. Let's hope the GWS put in a good one today. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Always entertaining, given oh, Sheedy, John. Now, on. I asked Sheeds what he's looking for, and as he said, look, it's uh, they've got six hours left in their season, so they want to give it their all and finish strongly, but what are you expecting as far as today's concern? Well, he did mention they were a bit short up forward. Goal spread is the key, with Patton out of the side, Cameron out of the side as well. They're going to look for a lot of players to get on the scoreboard, I think especially through the midfield. Hoskin Elliott kicked five last week. Can he repeat that? They'd certainly love that. The second one is tackle, tackle, tackle from the Demons. They want to, Their focus today is on their tackle count. When they've travelled, their intensity around the ball hasn't been great, so they'll be looking for that to lift today. And the third one is their key player in the midfield who sets the tone for their side is Nathan Jones. Number one in disposals, handballs, effective kicks, contested position, uncontested position and clearances. He is their main player at the D's this year. All right, we've got beautiful sunshine here at Monica and we are all set to go. It's the GWS Giants taking on Melbourne. Make sure you join us. And Matty Campbell, who calls all the action from the first bounce right after the break. Welcome back to Monica Oval. Luke Power running through with his family, running through the banner. A terrific young man. His 300th game today. Made his debut round two, 1998. 282 games for the Lions. He's a triple premiership player. He played in those premierships up forward, down back in the midfield. Part of that terrific midfield for the Brisbane Lions. He's an All-Australian and we congratulate Luke Power on becoming uh, one of those rare players in football to play 300 games, Jason. Yeah, it's a tremendous performance, isn't it? And uh, as you say, he's done it in all different sorts of yep. roles. I think he's, he's epitomised what a professional football player is all about. He, he trains hard, he plays hard, he does all the right things. And, and I think all these young players that are playing for GWS would be sucking as much information and experience out of someone like Luke Power as they possibly could. Let's get down to ground level and uh, hear from uh, Lee Colbert, who's just looking forward to uh, the afternoon here in Monaco. I am indeed, Matty. The sun is shining. We've got uh, a really strong breeze right across the ground, so skills are going to be very important for both teams. Just watch kicking for goal, too. It's going to go right across the front of goal. I expect you guys to be uh, right on top of it. Well done to Luke Power, too. 300 games. Been a marvel. Three premierships. What a star. Yeah, good fella, too, Luke. Uh, so uh, players getting set in their positions. He Rivers like starting up forward. Looks like he's wandering out to a wing. Lukey Powell. And uh, if Melbourne, yeah, Melbourne uh, doing the right thing, putting Grimes on him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just what you want is you're winding down your career and it's a special day for you and uh, the opposition just tags you. Yeah. So uh, Powell Hos was involved in the uh, toss. Hoskin Elliott kicked five last week for GWS. He's got Lyndon Dunn as his direct opponent. Who John, likes that physical pressure as well. Let me ask you, what have you made of, uh, I'll ask you again when we get a chance, but Tom Scully's season thus far. Giants kicking to the right of screen. Round 21 underway. Spencer has a good look at Giles before knocking it down to McKenzie. First possession for him. Now it's out towards Scully. And first to it. Blees, that man that uh, had a big game last week. So did Hoskin Elliott. That's a great tackle from Scully. Got to be holding and it's more. He's 360. Yeah. He'll be 540 degrees. That is a brilliant tackle. An aggressive tackle. So a bright start for Tom Scully up against his old club. But I reckon it's been a tough year for him, Jono, because oh, it has so much was expected of him. I think he's now starting to find his feet in the GWS colours and the way that uh, Kevin Sheedy wants wants them to play. But he's playing as a tagger as well, and I think that's for his own development in some ways as well, because he's been able to play on the best and learn some different running patterns as a young player. Here's Hoskin Elliott, who got the free kick, the kick five last week, and gets it in all the way into Adams, who oh. almost took the mark. Very close, and it's rushed through by Strauss, so the opening score to the Giants, and it was almost a goal. It looked like he'd almost done enough to mark it. You can just see the action here between uh, Lyndon Dunn, who's staging for a reversal of free kick. Went down like a bag of proverbial, but not going to get any joy there. He was done. So the kick out. Long ball out towards Grimes. He just got under it a little bit. And kept in play. Bale. And casually, but now it's, it is out of bounds. These two teams met earlier this year, round 13. It was a big win to Melbourne. 
was a very entertaining first quarter. Six goals to five. Melbourne leading by six points before they kicked away in the second quarter. That throw-in drifted about 10 metres sideways as it came in. There is a stiffish breeze out there, as Colby was telling us about before. I'd be uh, really disappointed if Melbourne don't try and assert their authority early. It is, it's, it's late in the first year for GWS. They've wound up a number of their players. They're thin on stocks. Mel Melbourne's got to get into them. Have a look at this. That's where it started, and look where the ball's going. It's going sideways at the end. So plenty of players around the ball. McKenzie first to it. McDonald got through some traffic, but then got stopped. Forward go the Giants. Haynes the target. Edwards the tackler. He's got on top of Garland there, but he can't get him to ground until after the whistle. Well, their pressure around the ball at the moment. GWS has been very good. A couple of strong tackles led by Tom Scully in the first couple of minutes of play, and that's why they've been able to maintain possession in the forward half of the ground. They've had four tackles and three disposals. That's because there's lots of players around this ball. Sylvia extracts it and gets plenty on the kick, and it's a very, very kind bounce. Corn's got a hand to it, but that was enough. Here's Howe. Jeremy Howe with a handball over the top. Releases. Seller, and Seller kicks the goal. Gee, that was smart by Jeremy Howe. I'll tell you a couple of things that you probably don't pick up until you actually think about it. When he got the ball, he burst into space. He actually ran away from the player he wanted to give the ball to because he wanted to draw the GWS defenders away. You can see where Seller is there running ahead of it. He runs away from him and draws everyone away and then gives the best left-hand handball across the body where Seller doesn't have to break stride. And this will be a great angle. You can just see the way he goes away and draws the GWS players back. Terrific play. Beautifully summed up by Jason Dunstall. The goal assist from uh, Jeremy Howe, but the opening goal of the former Crow, James Seller, and Melbourne on the board for their first. And you see how hard the middle of the ground is as well. That ball, when it dribbled on from Sylvia, just kept going. Yep. Yeah, it sort of got speed, didn't it? And, of course, they uh, water the uh, ground in the middle before the game every time here at Marnica as uh, the Giants going back. Smith to power. Uh, it's up and under from Luke. And the, the breeze actually blew it over the line. Jared Rivers gets another opportunity playing forward. He's proved adept at both ends. We know he's a terrific defender that takes a very strong mark and reads the play well, but he's enjoying life as a forward in uh, the second half of this season. This is where now, with Spencer taking the mark, you'd love the half, one of the half backs for the D's to be coming past with some speed so he doesn't have to kick the ball. Yeah, Ruckman should be banned from kicking short. <laughs> Lyndon Dunn kicks it long. Again, sell of the target. Falls towards Green. Tapscott slides in. Green kept his feet. Smother was a good one. It was affected by Bunteen and they rush it through for the behind. Excellent smother. Head right over the ball. Put himself in a dangerous situation to be uh, with Brad Green having a pot shot at goal. Gee, that's Perfect good. technique. Yep. Yeah, technique's good there. Kick to the outer side is a good one. Straight to Big Giles, and he's got Smith running for him. Well, and speed. And he's going to take it on. He took on a couple in McDonald and Spencer. Down the line he goes, and he's hoping for the ball to go out. And for all he's there first, though, keeps it in. Looks up. Oh, he's gone. Two on one wins out. Strauss to help him out. Back to Frawley. Kick is a turnover. Green. Not his best finish. Well, he got let off the hook, James Frawley, but that was lackadaisical from the moment he got the ball and allowed himself to get tackled. Then he gets a second opportunity and just turned it straight over off one step. So Green probably should have done better with that. And now it's Garland trying to get some extra meterage, but it's touched off the boot. It's going to be a Melbourne kick. It's going back to Strauss. Out wide he goes. Grimes. Down the line. Seller. Corn's got rid of him. Going back Kennedy. He's not sure. Bunteen. Green got back to help out. Into the middle looking for Miles. Took his time but he managed to get it on to Tyson. And he goes back. And they need some runners here otherwise they've gone backwards but they get a couple. It ends up with Green, all chip over the top, missed his target in Smith. So a bit untidy. It was a right play by GWS, I think. He was looking for the handball over the top, Smith, instead of the, the little tricky kick from Green. But geez, Green can rack 
rack up the disposals, works hard both ways, especially back to help the defence out. Charles. Thrown in again. Thrown in again. We may see that a couple yeah. of times with that, Priest. Yeah. Boundary umpire throwing straight into the teeth of it, and Spencer and Giles will reset. Don't do it. Play on. Didn't go far again. Tyson in. Play He's on. caught very quickly. Been a reasonably tame start to the game, hasn't it? Hasn't been a lot of physical aggression. Come on, guys. A little bit scrappy. Play on. Spencer pushing it wide. No one there though for Melbourne, so you can understand the thought process, but there's got to be some communication between the, the players around the Ruckman. And we'll see if the Ruckman adjust here with this throw in. Starting back, they need to push forward a little bit. Giles tried to flip it. That's not bad. That's back over to Tyson. But again, uh, haven't we seen that a lot already? <laughs> Kick smothered off the boot or touched off the boot. And that boundary umpire out there is getting plenty of work. Barely seen the ball over the other side of the ground. Yeah. It's headed in that direction again. Quick kick forward by Grimes. Jetta tried for the free kick by not taking it completely. Bale took on Tyson, got rid of him. McKenzie has Jones running for him. Inside 50 he goes. Steadies has a shot at goal. It's always going to be skinny, and it's a behind for Nathan Jones. Well, good link-up play by the Ds, able to get a shot at goal, but then not able to set the zone. GWS out too easily. And oh, hands in the back. In the back. Yeah, hands in the back. Yeah, it was pretty clear against Frawley. Phillips not sure. And he just hits it long in hope towards the top of the square. And it works out. Hoskin Elliott. Oh, he's got good hands, yeah. hasn't he? Fantastic. I was about to say, that's not a bad option, the Ruckman. You get called to play on. So why not just kick it long to a one-on-one -on -one contest? That's exactly what Phillips did, and yep. I reckon it was smart play. Long and direct, one-on-one, -on -one. and here's a young man whose confidence is riding pretty high at the moment. He's still 18 years of age, kicked five goals last week. Well, we spoke to Sheeds about it earlier. He said, a young man in his sixth game, how exciting is that? Should kick this one, and he picks up where he left off from last week. Goal to Hoskin Elliott, and the Giants take the lead. Or oh, even it up. Coast to coast goal for the, for the Giants, straight out of full back, got the ball long down the middle. Phillips got involved, the Ruckman, and then they're able to get the ball in long. And that's the free kick there. And Hoskin Elliott is around that free kick there. So his work rate then to push forward was excellent. Got him behind the defence and takes an excellent contested mark. Goes back and finishes on a good opponent too in Garland. So that's great. Great body work. Didn't put the hands in the back. And a fantastic contested mark. Doesn't turn 19 for another couple of weeks, Hoskin Elliott. He's not particularly tall either, listed at just 185 centimetres. Yeah. But he, he looks like he plays tall, long arms and a good reach over the top of a taller yeah. opponent. And Devin Smith gets rid of uh, Seller on the way through. There's a bit of... I love that. He just gave him a little nudge yeah. and just moved back to his position. If that had been Townsend, he would have gone straight through it. <laughs> <laughs> He's not out there this afternoon. Difficult conditions for umpires with this wing. Flip over the top from Miles. It's taken by Seller, and again, Jones links up. Short, good vision. Yeah, spotted that uh, Bale had some room. Sylvia, Howe, 55 metres out, hooks it back, hoping for Tapscott, who stopped. He did. He did. He won't like that when he has a look at it. He needed to attack the footy. The kick came in from uh, Jeremy Howe, who set up the first goal for Melbourne. And we said that Luke Power was starting on the wing and Grimes went to him. Well, Howe's actually playing on him on the wing now, so that's going to be a very interesting matchup. Different types of players completely. Now, Kennedy tries to draw the man. He didn't. But he backed up Hampton and uses some pace to get out of trouble. The handball wider to Darley. And he gets plenty on the kick. One on one. Haynes trying to find front position. McDonald got rid of him. That's Tom McDonald. Balances up to Grimes, looks in board, gets some help from his co-captain in Trengove, but they ran out of room. He kicked that from uh, on the substitutes bench. That one, he was that far over. I Look, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he saw his saw teammate, his teammate he saw the Melbourne yeah. jumper, and he didn't want to clean up a teammate, because I think he's uh, he's normally pretty hard out at Luke. Oh, Tapp's for sure. I think, I think you're right, though. I think he thought... He uh, saw the blue and the red. He saw the blue and the red coming, and he was in a better position. 
That boundary throw in didn't go That's that far shocker. either. That's with the breeze. Seller's got some pace. And he also threw it in at about a 45 degree angle yeah. towards Melbourne's goal. Yeah. It was a party trick, really. <laughs> Be a little bit better here because both Ruckman have gone back a long way expecting it to travel and it does it's a good one well read by Toby Green over to James McDonald good kick and the kick might tumble for Edwards or it might tumble past him Edwards v done Edwards might have the youth on his side to get free here and unfortunately though oh, Lyndon Dunn wants to go on with it well Lyndon's trying to exert some physical pressure he's already had one goal kicked on him with Hoskin Elliott was his direct opponent who was able to get clear of, of him and take a mark over Garland and on that occasion was nearly outdone a game with speed. Falau come over the top. Frawley got it from Strauss. In turn done. Wider kick. Now uh, is it my imagination or is the 70s porno mo from Lyndon Dunn gone? It is gone. He's uh, just working up to November. He's got a couple of months of, uh, of freedom and then he gets back into it. A new crop. Yep. Into the pocket go the Giants. Haynes couldn't take it. Jones over the top of him. Haynes goes twice. Eight apiece here at Monica. Not a huge difference in any of the stats yet either. It's a pretty similar possessions inside 50s, contested possessions, clearances the lot. Now Green managed to keep that in. The Giants kept it alive. Kick from Scully. That's good mark. How again? Yeah, he's, for me, from what I've seen of Melbourne this season, he's been the shining light. He's the bloke that I look at this team and go, is there a massive plus for the Ds? It's Jeremy Howe. And, and not just taking the big hangers. He can get possessions. He can set things up. He plays further afield. I really like him as a player. Well, it's him and Nathan Jones, and they're two players they signed up for contracts three weeks yeah. ago or two weeks ago when they took on the Suns, so... Spencer wins for holding in the uh, ruck contest. I think Jake wasn't quite sure it was no, his. That's one of those good ones where the two ruckmen sit there, look at the ump and go, please be me, please yeah. be me, but they're not quite sure. Yeah. Well, Devin Smith was lucky then. Picked the ball up and handed it to McDonald to kick back. And if the they umpire was in a yeah, that, that ball nasty just, mood, that he would have paid 50. 30 metres end over end. So a strong breeze blowing to the oh, other no. side. That's a horrible kick. Toby Green did well to mark it, actually. He, did, he didn't learn from the, fir the first short kick he did. Green having a good start to the game. Top of the square he goes. Oh, oh Edwards. yes! Sean Edwards comes in for the hanger. Well, someone's going to get out to Jake Spence and say, mate, keep it simple. You kick long down the line. None of this finessing stuff. You butchered the ball in the middle of the ground early. Now a direct turnover that's going to cost him a goal. He's only kicked the one goal so far. One goal, four. He's taken a couple of big leaps. In his first game, he tried to take mark of the year. So he has got a spring for this for just his second goal. But more importantly, this to put the Giants in front. Finishes off. Deserve the goal. Well, Melbourne defenders have to become a little bit smarter. Even the midfielders get around Spencer to create a handball receive. Look at the space right. around him. Get get someone around him. Wrap the around. Kick. I know the kick. The kick. You should be able to hit that kick, no question. Or go long like you suggested. There's a fantastic grab from Edwards. That is just a great leap and eyes on the ball the whole way. But Melbourne defenders need it and midfielders need to create some run if they're going to use Spencer as a go-to player. Another 18-year-old doing uh, well up forward for uh, the Giants there from St Mary's in the Territory. Also at Melbourne Grammar, but he's kicked his second goal for the season. Second goal for the Giants this afternoon. They lead by a kick. Sylvia trying to do something about it. Wins the clearance. Just to kick off the outside of the boot, though, but it might fall for... It does. It falls for Rivers. Now he's going to kick from right on the 50, but he's going to kick into that breeze a little so he's going to hang up and he does the discipline thing kicks it to the top of the square hoping for seller big grab didn't take it green dumped another ball up from the ruck seller 
pushes it down. Coming through Adams. Scully quick hands to power. They've worked pretty well at the clearances, Brad. They've been excellent at the clearances. Been able to get that release player yeah. out the back, which then creates the movement going forward of the play. Toby Green in particular has had three clearances already. Here we go. So again, it's a boundary throw in out of side. Down in front it goes. Smith first to it. Quick hands, good one to Tyson. He's a good kick of the ball usually. Breeze gets hold of it again. Really got to make, really got to adjust. We've seen that at, out of bounds on the full a couple of times now. Just got to know that it's going to blow over the line. Hit a tough start for Izzy Falau. Hasn't got into the game as yet, but there's going to be a few players that struggle to get into it at different stages, particularly given the conditions. It is windy, and if you're a, a key position forward and you're getting attended to by key defenders, it's going to be difficult to get easy possessions. Grimes almost dumped. Well, he was dumped, but almost afterwards. Umpire said it was in the act of kicking. Jetta, good take. Jones running past. Gets a 1-2 from Spencer. Trying to cut through the corridor, but it's closed down a little bit by the Giants. Now to Joel McDonald. Keeps it short. Keeps it low. Green just above the grass. And this is his first touch of the day as well. It's the first time he's seen the pill and did very well to get on the end of that one. It's just three goals shy of 350. And he's only got... There's the replay just keeping it very low. Good hands, really yeah, good, good hands. hands. Tough think, take. You'd think if he starts this around the left-hand goal post, he should be pretty sweet. Yep. He's got two games to go after this one. Now, he probably didn't give it enough no, to the left-hand post. And that shot there gave you a good idea of the impact that the breeze is having on the flight of the ball. Looked to be a dangerous kick, but it wasn't. Adams, wider, looking for Giles, and he's happy to see it over. Well, if you're a wingman playing on this this side of the ground, after we have a look at this, the, the breeze just pushes this ball oh. for a miss for Green. That did travel a long way. But if, you play, all the if, way you're, if you're playing on this side of the ground where the ball is now as a, as a wingman, you wouldn't want to be stuck here all day because you won't see much action and at it was, all. If it was your old club, uh, Brad, Dougie Hawkins would play that side of the ground all four <laughs> quarters. <laughs> Davis combining with Corns and Power and Rivers affecting the smother. So a few of those already today. It's been the one skill all year that's that's come back into the game in a strong way. There's been some great smothers as the season has gone on. Giles looking down for Miles. Scully over the top of Jones. Plenty of numbers in defence for the GWS. A couple of forwards just outside their defensive 50. No one deep behind the centre. Everyone's defensive of the uh, of the circle at the moment. Scully not going far there. How's got him? The Giants have uh, got a contract to play three games a year here at Monica. Had their first victory, a famous win over the Suns here earlier this season. Last time they were here. Punched out wider by Golds. Giants free kick. Oh, yeah. Well, if he's playing on his out of bounds. Has to do. Yep. Fairly clear instructions from the umpires. Scully, the fend off is too high. It'll be Trengove with a free kick. And he's within range. It's just a and question. 50. And 50 for abuse. He's within range now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Scully should know better. He's a disciplined player. Yeah, a couple of Melbourne players want to get in his face and tell him all about it too. Yeah. So Captain Jack Trengove puts it through for Melbourne's second goal and they edge back in front. Well, let's have a look at it here. This is, we're looking for a high fender. Oh, this is the uh, the initial one. And that wasn't high either. He actually caught him across the arm. Yeah. So that shouldn't have been a free kick. He's been called for play on without that being is, inside. That is play on. Yep. Even if you're outside the line. Here's yep. the high fend off. 
He's got possession. Well, but he had both arms up there when he actually got the ball, so that's difficult. Just saw there the mouth guard came out and but the it, uh, certain it, statements. Now, but you're saying it wasn't a free kick. It, well, I, I don't think so. He had both arms up with the ball where the ball was anyway, so the contact was there with the head, but it didn't look demonstrative uh, for the protestations with the umpire yeah, either. Yeah. Everyone stop. Right there. Clear so it out. free kick against Clear Spencer. I mean, I, look, Sweet. we definitely, definitely need to respect the umpire's positions Push. and be GWS. respectful the way we behave towards Push. them. But I also don't want to get to the stage where we're that robotic, we can't allow the players to have any emotion. Because they are disappointed when things go against them. So Adams, short. Uh, just taken too easy by Smith. And it might hurt them on the rebound. McDonald to Sylvia. Penetrating long kick to Green. That's how you rebound. That's how you get the ball into your forward 50 quickly. He's a bit slow getting up, but he'll have learned from his first kick here. I reckon Kurtley am. Kurtley Hampton made an error because he, he slowed down while the ball was in the air. He wasn't sure where it was going to land. And Brad Green kept running flat stick and then allowed him to take it on the mark. It was just before there. We see the replay there. Just before that, he took a couple of steps, which he slowed down. It cost him in the end. So Green's kick was a good one the first time. He just... It really, the wind took it in the last five metres. He starts this one, similar spot. It holds its line. He gets his first two in a row for the Demons. Well, a quality player, Brad Green, and we'll see here, Devin Smith, critical turnover there, just relaxed on the mark, and then it's a long, penetrating kick from Sylvia right down the middle of the ground. There's the hesitation, that small hesitation from yeah. Hampton where he was trying to pick up the flight and worry about where Green was running to as well. And there's a quality player, Brad Green. His first shot at goal, missed, learnt from his mistake, went back and nailed his second shot at goal. First goal for Green. And Melbourne now just uh, inching out to a seven-point lead. Back in the middle, and this time it's Seller in the ruck. Miles came through, went without it. Couch didn't, he kicked it forward. Taps got beaten to it by Rivers. Back to Seller. Jones wants it. He's wrapped up quickly. And he's pushed in the back by Miles. Oh, that'll, that'll be a reverse. Reverse. Yeah. Pushed him into the deck and pushed him high. Back to him now on the floor. Yeah, good umpire. Right there. Right, Taps got. Stay down. Let's take, take a look at this. Probably not the best angle, but he just slammed his head into the deck. Meantime, Darley trying to do something against about four Melbourne Demons. That looked a little bit high for Blees, but play on the call. Jones backs up, takes on Darley, gets past him. Handball very tight to the line. They keep it in. Couch got it from Tapscott. Clever football by Melbourne. Can they get something happening? Beautiful pick up by Bale. Jetta's in there as well. Demons trying to ignite here and get something going. Skills on this way. The ball's fished out. They're still going. How? Thought about Jones. Back to Seller in turn, Blees. Straightens up, hooks it into the pocket, and it's an easy mark in the end. Didn't want the it's Rowan Bale, but the uh, Devon Smith was saying he was pushed in the back. Now, this will be an interesting kick. Kennedy was saying a, a, a tough in the back. kick to judge the breeze from here. Big left to right here, Jace, from that pocket. You'll see the ball just go 10 to 15 meters to the right. This is a very difficult kick. Yeah, Rowan Bale. Yeah. It starts at the right spot. Gee, it wasn't a bad effort. That was a good looking <laughs> yes. kick off the boot. But that is a very difficult pocket to kick them from because you're virtually starting it at the point post and taking away all the angle of the goals that you have to kick to. Yeah, there's not much room for error, <laughs> is there? Big long kick out by Corns. Both holding. Giles against Seller. Giles had the pace Hi, to get there. And somehow it falls back Hi, to Seller. We gave it to Blees. Now Sylvia. Looking for how. Chop of the arms. That's what I like about what Jeremy Howe's been able to bring to his game. He's come out and try and take that mark right out Jeremy, in front. Because he's so dangerous, got that Don't high leap. He now is getting a few free kicks with 
the opposition players chopping his arms because they are worried about the height he can get with his Joe. jump. Holds up in the breeze. You need someone to jump at this. Big spoil. Beats Miles. Trengove gets clear. Somehow to Sylvia. He dives back on it. Now he's in trouble if he doesn't get this out. Leading possession getters on the ground, Toby Green with seven for GWS and he's about to get eight. Sylvia with seven for Melbourne. He's about to get eight and he's got 50 metres, Green. Trend Gove, I think it was, went into that protected area. Push right out back, Utah. Stay out. Got a man out wide screaming for it. Right there. Miles. Play on. Going past power, a little fumble, but recovered quickly. Into the pocket it goes. No crummer there for the Giants. It's all Melbourne. Trend goes to Joel McDonald. It's a good kick from him. <coughs> Saw that Rivers had a couple of metres on Giles. Player wow. streamed down. He has to wait. Gets it back. Trend goes and keeps it low, but he didn't allow for the breeze. <coughs> a disappointing push forward. Thanks, by Melbourne on that occasion. Had a number of players trying to lead into position, continued to stay wide, and the result out on the full because of the breeze. And Kennedy looks to his right. There's no switch on, so this is going to this is, be very careful here. It could just blow back out of, out of bounds. Well, he didn't get it to tumble properly. Garland retreating and maintained possession. McDonald to Jones, and he looks up, and he saw Jeremy Howell, just a little slip, but he got to his feet quickly, hands over to Tapscott, Tapscott inside 50, he goes, Sylvia let it go, good communication, let it go for Green, you gotta come back on that line, and we'll get a great yeah, shot of what is ahead of Brad Green here on our reverse angle camera. Direct drop, drop punt, Jason, That's will he line. run around and try and hook this with the, the natural left foot? Oh, I reckon with the breeze he can kick a normal drop punt from there. Start at the left-hand goal post and let the breeze push it through. 20 seconds. Here's Green. Cheers, mate. Waits for the breeze to take. It's got reverse swing. <laughs> he's, he's, he's almost kicking directly into the breeze from there. Yeah, true. Two. A little kick from uh, Corns to find Giles. He's been busy. Trying to slow things down. Play on, play on. You. Joel's had to tip it back because he's usually the outlet for the long kick out of defence. Kennedy again, so similar position he was not too long ago. Minute and a half remaining in the first quarter. Melbourne by eight points. Push in the back. I think the worrying signs, though, over the last ten minutes or so of this quarter is that the game's been played in Melbourne's half of the ground. There's not enough footy in the attacking 50 for GWS. And it's headed in Melbourne's direction again. Grimes runs around, into the pocket he goes. Trengove was his target. Some area work from power to make sure he didn't get it. And that's what we did see in the first half of the quarter, is GWS would back themselves in one-on-one -on -one against the Melbourne defenders. They've been able to take a couple of good some marks. fast breaks. Through some fast breaks, take yeah. some good one-on-one -on -one marks up forward. Player. It hasn't been a while since they've been up there. Jones trying to bust out with strength. Fine. But they'll be happy to hold on here, the GWS, Ronnie. and restrict Melbourne if they Nate can again. from scoring again late in this quarter. Nate. Yep. From the bounce. Young Quiet. Phillips up against Spencer. Spencer wins it. Pushes it out wide. Trengove couldn't get it free there. Ball. That's holding the ball. So Green Wait. comes up with the ball and the free. Play on, you're coming around. Play on. You. Play on. Just Play on. Walk, walking crookedly. Scully couldn't take it. 30 seconds going, to go in the go. first quarter. Nothing high, Giants nothing just holding on here. Giles, got to the front spot well. Quick hand Scully, Green, got to call out the back. Fantastic handball. Flipped it out to Adams, but he's not sure where to kick it. 
Down the line he goes. Now Phillips lost his footing. Frawley, have they got time here, Melbourne? They do. They just want to move it quickly. McDonald got it from McDonald. Oh, Lyndon Dunn got it and went away quickly to the top of the square. Seller almost. Crummer needed for the D's. Jet is there, not to be. There was good movement from Melbourne. We've seen them transfer the ball pretty quickly and pretty well. But after uh, a fairly bright start by the Giants, most of the footy's been played at Melbourne's end of the ground. But at quarter time here at Marnica Oval, Melbourne lead the Giants by eight points. tackle. Seller and Seller kicks the goal. Oh, oh, oh Edwards. yes! Sean Edwards comes in for the hanger. It holds its line. He gets his first two in a row for the Demons. Oh, welcome back to Marnica Oval. Quarter time where Melbourne hold an eight-point lead over the Giants. All individual goal kickers. McDonald and Sylvia getting some ball for Melbourne. Toby Green continuing his great debut season with ten disposals in the first quarter for the Giants. Big day for Luke Power of the Giants. His 300th game. Lee Colbert is up in the stand with some family members. I am, Matty, uh, surrounded by Powers, actually. They, they've got the whole Hawk stand uh, taken out. Of course, Sam and uh, older brother Ben and little baby May, who's Luke's uh, youngest. Sam, uh, it's been an incredible career from uh, older brother, hasn't it? Uh, it has, yeah. We're just uh, extremely proud of him. Um, so a big, yeah, big turnout today, about 20 of us. Uh, uh, up from Melbourne and um, yeah, only the, the 66 player to do it, so not many do it, so it's a uh, fantastic achievement, something we're very proud of. It's an extraordinary feat, you've seen him uh, play at Brisbane uh, and been so successful and now he's running around with pretty much a bunch of kids. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot, a lot different, a big change from I suppose when Brisbane were at uh, the peak of, of their form, but he, he's loving it this year, it's been fantastic for him, doing a, a lot of coaching um, as well, it's just, just as much a coaching role uh, than a playing role and, and loving watching the, the development of the young, young players. And Benny, I know, uh, like in all families, you were the star of the whole family, but you just uh, hung out with your mates and uh, you used to dominate, Luke, is that correct? Yeah, I had it over him, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> no, he's, a, um, he's been a great player, it's a great day, and um, we're very proud of him. Um, and, um, you know, it's, uh, we're looking forward to hopefully a win. They're close enough. We couldn't get uh, Kev or Michelle to chat, so they've sent the two brothers up. Um, what's the story? They just shut it down, the boys? Yeah, no, I think uh, yeah, they shut it right there. Not, no interest there. They've had enough <laughs> after 15 years. Very good. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day. I'm sure uh, you're going to have a big party tonight and you've got plenty of food and drinks to enjoy, so get enjoy the footy. Thanks, Thanks boys. Oh, that's uh, 15 years for Luke Power. And anyone that knows Luke Power knows that uh, Ben Power sounds like him. That's his brother. <laughs> Away go Melbourne to the opening set of the second quarter. They get the first clearance. They're inside forward 50. There is Luke Power, but Taps got beat into it. Oh, somehow came out to Tyson. They worked it out, the Giants. They got it clear. Play on. And they went to ground there, Haynes. Scully's there. Play on. Frawley. Into his back, James Frawley. He's going to win the free kick. Into his back. Right there. Frawley hits it up into the pocket. Taps got in position, made good position. <laughs> Somehow it goes over the back to Jared Rivers though, and Rivers slots it through. You have to query the defence here. It was a little bit too soft that one, and Jared Rivers couldn't believe his luck. You can see the push in the back here. There's not an awful lot in it, but at least you can't lie on the back of someone. Um, Jared Rivers could not believe his luck. You can see Phil Davis is his opponent. And Phil Davis, he just loses him. He tries to go to the contest, doesn't get any of the ball. And Jared Rivers goes, how good is this? The ball bobs into my hand and I can just turn around and slot a goal. Don't push him in, James. Goal to Rivers. And I think Davis did the right thing by the team to leave him and try and kill the spoil. But that was his error. Yeah, he, he didn't. I think he half stumbled, stumbled off the into, body contact yeah. with Rivers and then that put him out of the contest. So first goal of the second quarter to Melbourne. They're out to a 14-point lead. 
and Couch Behind. gets Scully and drives him into the ground. Good aggressive tackle. They're down in the tackle count, Melbourne, 18 to 13 currently in this game. And that's one of their focuses today was just to get their tackle count up and try and win that area from a statistical point of view. Scully couldn't get boot to ball. Golds fishes it back to Kennedy. Now Edwards. Good kick to Green. And the side, come out, come out. Wants to move it quickly. Wanted to use Edwards. A little bit behind him. He's got enough skill to get around. Now hits it in long and high. Over the top. Good luck. Good running. Scully too. He was involved. He was tackled by Couch. Top, top. Gee, that's a good top. mark. Yeah. He got up nice and high. He's uh, not big in stature, that's for sure. But he'll enjoy that mark. Not known for his overhead marking, is he? No, and yeah. he'd love to he's slot right this here. one through. He just picks up the flight of the ball first out of everyone. He marked it over the there. top of a ruckman. You've got to be pretty pleased with that for a small midfielder. So Scully's kicked three goals three this year for the Giants. He just tumbles oh. it. It's oh. a mongrel, oh. but it's all clear. It's in the paper. Doesn't matter how they get there, Jace, as long as they go through the big sticks. That did on, on that occasion. That's the ugliest we've seen this year. Yes. Wasn't a great kick. You see... He'll float into screen here, picks up the fight of the ball, drifts towards Tom Scully, takes the big strides, gets the leap, and takes a, another good contested mark in the forward end for the GWS. They've taken a couple in this game today and goes back. And not the best of kicks. Watch the spin on this ball. It goes, oh my. It goes through. Oh. Leads the GWS, GWS in scoreboard impact this year. Doesn't matter how they go through. The kids do not try that at home. It was a terrible kick from Tom Scully, but he's got the goal. He'd be pleased with the mark and goal, though. And they answer the early Melbourne goal of the quarter to bring the margin back to eight. Streaming through, but picked up first for Melbourne. It was Bale. Comes out wider. McDonald goes back. With Joel back to Tom McDonald. And further afield, all the way back to Frawley, but they've worked it out pretty well. Although he's gone a fair way back to Dunn. Now it's two on one. He's trying to draw the man to get it over the top. Garland comes in to Shepard. Has done. Kicks it long down the line. Trengove. Well, how came at it. Got in his way. Darley back to power. Measured a little pass to Smith. They repel the attack there. The Giants as Smith hits it up high. Scully in the van again. Phillips went up. Tom McDonald roved it best. Handball a little bit too much on it. Stolen by James McDonald. Handball's over the top to Toby Green, and they get two in a row of the Giants, and former Demons involved in Scully first and McDonald second. Gee, that's a nice little passive play. Just some good defensive pressure, a little bit of uncertainty with Melbourne moving the ball laterally, and James McDonald involved in the build-up here. There's a good spoil, but it's this hand pass here puts him under pressure, and James McDonald could have kicked it himself, but he said, let's make sure of it. Hand passes over and they run in for the easiest of goals. How good's Toby Green going? 12 yeah. disposals already in the early he, part of this game. You know game. what he does? He just works hard. He does. That's what he does. A couple of weeks ago, we had a look at the stats of a player in his first season, or an 18 year old in his first season, and no player in the history of the AFL since they've started taking stats has got it more than Toby Green. And there were some big names on Is the that list. Right? Uh, Reasonable effort, isn't it? His average disposals at the top of the list. Oh, now, no chance. And he's uh, just carrying on in that tradition today with 12 disposals and a goal. And a lot of the other key players on that list as well had a lot more senior players around them to help them get into the game. Yeah. So margin is back to two points when it looked as though Melbourne were going to kick clear. Two answering goals from the Giants. Trying to do something about it again. Scully a little bit crude in that. Straight up, Tom. Stay there. Over the top. But Bale, who plays on quickly. And the breeze got hold of that as he tried to find Couch out wide. Finally gets it. Back to McKenzie. A little one-two as Couch drives Wait. Melbourne forward again. Every Boys, Colin Sylvia. Yeah, now Colin Wait. Sylvia came flying out of the contest. Advantage taken. Wait. Melbourne to the top of the square. No real advantage just yet. How spectacular over the top of power. Still going Melbourne though. Still a chance. Grimes. Corns over the top of him. Green wants to get it through from behind and does. Why play on in that situation? You've got a... Well, Colin Sylvia won't be happy. Thumping kick of the ball. Yeah. 40 metres out from goal. 45 degree angle. And you play onto the boundary side. Sure. 
Yeah, in a, in a, on a day where uh, the breeze is blowing all the way over there, you, you play on into the tighter pocket. Davis's kick, done almost the mark. Butters up for a second attempt. Well done by Lyndon Dunn. Handball over the top to Bale. Wider, couch. Good spoil from Corns is a good one. Well trapped by Giles. McDonald. Kick only about three or four metres. And they want the boundary line. They didn't find it yet, the Giants. Is it there yet? No, it's still in play. Somehow they ended up with it and somehow Smith got free. Away they go and Big Phillips has got the mark. Andrew Phillips. Well, we said in the first quarter, Jace, if they get it one-on-one -on -one to a contest, yep. then they back themselves in to win it. Even Phillips against an All-Australian fullback in Frawley. Jeez, um, got some confidence if he's going to kick not, it from there because he's kicking straight he's into the he's breeze. Going. He's not going to kick this. Tommy. <laughs> he's not. So it's going to land at the top of the square. So You won't get a better view than that. Yep. On the reverse angle. I hope he, he can make it. A I hope me. he kicks it. Or fade a little. Not a bad effort though, was it? Really good effort. Yeah. And you saw the ball travel pretty much perfectly straight. So that pocket, into the teeth. you're really kicking straight into the breeze. Yeah. Right out, James, when you're ready. So margin again, two. Sloppy kick. kick. A little Sloppy. bit untidy. That's out of bounds on the full. It'll be a kick to power. Drills it low to Hoskin Elliott. Umpire blew the whistle while he's on the ground. Multitasking. As Hoskin Elliott into the pocket, he goes. It was a low percentage kick. He's not going to kick the goal from there. Lyndon Dunn did well. Oh, then he's don't pay to get that. This one. Don't pay that. That's the umpire further afield. Lyndon Dunn came in to initiate the contact and bump him, and he just grabbed him by the arm and threw him past him. That's a poor free kick to give. That's not understanding what's going on. Tab Scott for Melbourne. Seller. Easy one for Corns to spoil. Lots of bumping off the ball. Dead. Have a look. Blocks off the ball. Well, he did well in the first. It's a good sport, really good yeah. sport. Yeah. Off the man on the mark, as the man on the mark working back. And he's running in to bump the bloke. I mean, and there. then he flops down. That is just poor. I know it's difficult for the umpires because players shouldn't stage, but that's it's annoying. Now yeah, the runner got involved. Melbourne kick. The, the GWS runner, Peter Dean. Peter Dean. Come on, Deanie, what are you doing? <laughs> the former Carlton champ was in the way. <laughs> Great man, Peter Dean. Sylvia, high ball in, and the, the defenders just looked at each other as Rivers gives it to Tapscott, who kicks it over the top of Seller, who's trying to keep it in, but he can't. Communication breakdown, and Corns yelling back, going, what happened there? Good duel, Rivers and um, Phil Davis. Yep. Very strong in the air, Jared yeah, Rivers. Phillips took that out of the air and kicked it along hey, the man. ground. Jones going back. They're yeah, giving yeah. up ground to... yeah, yeah. again, Melbourne. Play on. Adams trying to get around Blees. Yeah, Does yeah. so and gets on his left boot. And it's a good mark by McDonald. Right Tom McDonald. Going to send it towards the pocket. Hard one for most players to mark. Tumbled on the end a little bit. Trend go, but it's pinched though. The Giants trying hey, to work mate. it out. You now. Eventually they do through Toby Green. It was a percentage kick. Thought it might find the boundary. John McDonald back. Done. By hand. Wants it back. 1-2 with Tom McDonald. And runs Go. to a dangerous position. And kicks it along to the top of the square. Uh, Hampton dropped what he should have taken. Mate. A little bit of pressure now, but they should run it out. Cool, mate. Power back to Hampton. Good Indecision now. from him. And the kick in the end. It's a relieving one and they get a ball in. There's Israel Falau on screen. Still without a disposal. Just like to see him get involved with second and third efforts a little bit more and then lift his work rate around the contest, trying to spread from Jones that. Jones did well from there. Back out to Frawley. Inside 50, Rivers the target. Play on the call. Davis crashed into him. They both get up. Rivers leads in the chase. Beats Davis to it. Hands off to Blees. Keeps it very low. Almost a mark to um, 
Bunteen, he had a fair piece of it but couldn't complete it. He kept going and in the end he ran it out. So they're holding firm for the moment, the Giants defence. They're only down by two. Well, they have held firm in the last five minutes of the first quarter as well when Melbourne had the entire play in their half of the ground. And now they win a free kick here and they'll be looking to relieve this ball and take some pressure. Oh, look at that. That is what you call an old-fashioned sack. Across goals. Touch of Gubby Allen about that. He's <laughs> who's down there watching. <laughs> He'll be happy with that mention. Well, Mark's here, right on. Well, they've been... Uh, they've it, was been the right, it was the right option. Yeah, it was purely and simply poor execution. Poor execution. They've been holding firm. But to give Jeremy Howe an easy one like this, 20 metres out, directly in front, he pops it through. All clear. Well, the response now from GWS, you wouldn't like to see them drop their heads on the back of this easy turnover straight to Jeremy Howe. He'd love that. Goes back and slots the goal. But now you look to GWS and where they go after that kick. Are they going to go back and fight for the next ball and try and penetrate things going forward? Because they have been quite good and taken control in the early parts of this second quarter. Two goals to Melbourne for the quarter. Howe becoming the fifth goal kicker for Melbourne. All individual goal kickers around the ground. And back in the middle. Just had Gubby Allen and Peter Dean come over and ask uh, for an apology from all you guys up there. They claim that they wouldn't have done any of those things. Well, Gubby should know that that kick's going to come back and haunt him forever. Here you go, Melbourne Here you go. again. Trengove, long ball. Good judge. He's probably the best judge of the ball in yeah. the air in the AFL, right. Jeremy Howe. Yeah, that was a difficult one for a defender because you're caught underneath the ball. You've got no run up and you know Jeremy Howe's coming. Mm. Pretty hard to stop him. So for two goals in a minute for Melbourne, two goals in a minute for Jeremy Howe. You'll want to kick it better than the last one. Only just scraped it home. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> 20 metres out. Oh, that's not a good kicker. That's a lazy drop on the outside of the post. Just took it too easy. As a defender, you just have to maintain some sort of body pressure on him at all times. Playing him in front, you know he'll jump over you. Play from behind, he's got a good burst of speed. You need to be side on, create some good body pressure so that he can take, you can limit his run at the ball. Well read by Garland. Yeah, every time there's been a long kick, out of defence for GWS. It's been marked by multiple loose Melbourne players behind the footy. So this time they try to run it. Power got it from Corns. A little up and under from Power, not his best kick. Tyson just did enough to bring it at the front. Green, it's a searching handball forwards, a good one. Now they've got a runner in Smith. Kicks it inside 50. Not a lot of people home though for the Giants and going back Strauss. Edward slipped over when yeah. he was trying to get back towards goal. And he let him go there. He just stayed out of the contest, Edwards. He might have got a tackle because he got close. And it could prove costly as Melbourne are on the rebound now. Couch in the middle of the ground. Looks up, sees Jeremy Howe with a couple of metres in space. The breeze drags it out in front of Howe. Can he keep it in? He can't. Hear the uh, strong breeze and the effects, Mike. It's blowing up here at... Canberra. Not always the uh, warmest breeze either in winter. Oh, and Smith's yeah, made a few it. errors for um, the Giants. Yeah, Just, he's kick clumsy kick. with the tackle. Hey, hey, hey. Thanks, boys. Yeah, so it'll be a shot at goal yeah. for Melbourne Jeremy, downfield. And it's Jeremy Thanks, Howe. So oh. he Mark just scraped the first one through. It was a lazy yeah, kick hey, to the wrong hey, side, the second one. This one is furthest out, so he's going to kick from 45 metres out. Has he learned? Well, it'll make him kick through the footy. That's, that's, that's the, the first key. point. So on the reverse angle behind Jeremy Howe, he kicked through it. Didn't allow. Didn't allow enough for the breeze. Now the challenge comes because he missed one to both sides. Yeah. If you think, where's this wind? What's well, this wind doing? He probably, had, he probably had the right line with his second kick, yeah. but he was too close in. To he needed that line on the third kick. Yeah, exactly right. 
push, Jonathan Giles. Giles free kick. Push. So Giles will take the kick. As he kicks it down the line. And an easy one for Grimes to smile over the top of Smith. Tell you what, Matty, you're doing a very good job calling it because they're all a long way away, the players, and that's where the whole game has been played, on the far side of the ground. I'll be calling from the outer in the third <laughs> quarter. I'll just be over there, just send over a coffee. Because they are, it, the entire game has been played over there. Clouds in the background. There was some chance of a shower forecast yesterday, but so far so good in Canberra today. Plenty of players around the ball. Bale bursts through. Back to Strauss. They work it wider. Trengove. It's a scrubby little kick, but it might pay off. McKenzie on hands and knees. Back again, this time Seller around the body. Out comes Corns. How is there? Numbers needed for the Giants. They're in trouble. McKenzie, clean pickup. Kick out in front. A one hander taken play by Trango. Mark, sorry. Oh, Mark, sorry. He was calling play on as he loud was. as he could. I don't know why. That would have been interesting if someone came in and hammered Jack Trango. Well, it wasn't touched on the off the boot. Yeah. Line. Mark's here. You could hear two or three loud play on calls. So we've just seen Jeremy Howe have three shots at goal for one goal, two. Can Trengove straighten it up? Only going to kick from 20 minutes. It goes around the corner and then uses it to screw it back and kicks it through and kicks it nicely. Smart kick in the end from Trengove. And he was able to take a good mark running with the flight of the ball as well. As you see there, one-handed grab with Green and Hampton coming at him flat out, keeps eyes on it and takes an excellent that was, grab. He, he also did well to jump and not get his yeah. legs taken out from under him. He saw all that coming. Yeah, and I think Green knew the contact was coming and just kept a bit lower. Jack Tringo becomes the first player on the ground to kick two goals. And the Demons biggest lead of the game so far now, 16 points. With eight minutes remaining before half time, Spencer from the ruck took it out and cleared it quickly. Bales been doing some useful things, but he just fumbled that one. Tyson can't get now, he can get it out. Ball spills to Scully. Hard to get free there. Underneath all of that is Miles, done on top of him. Hiding the ball. Dunn's away. Wants to move it quickly. He didn't drop it properly, so it tumbles in, not in. Hard one to mark, though, for uh, Buntine. Now, here's a take by Seller. Back to Trengo for his third. Hampton didn't read it, but he still managed to just get a hand on it to push it through from behind. Well, Buntine did very well not to be knocked out by the ball on that occasion. It was coming in that quick and was able to keep it in front of him. Right there, Brad. Just get the feeling that the Giants are just a little bit off the pace here and are hanging on for dear life. That's going to turn things around with uh, strong marking by Giles like that. And as he pops it up, he hopes for someone to do similar. Oh. Uh, a big... oh. It's just one of those ones where Falau was only about four or five metres away and didn't really go towards the contest at all. Well, they're just losing their forward structure at the moment as well. The GWS have got no one inside 50, just trying to get as many numbers around the footy as possible, but they're not getting that break with run. And when they do, they're kicking it straight back to a Melbourne defender. Well, you mentioned Israel Flower. He's not going to be feeling good about himself at the moment. He, it looks like at the moment he's probably going to get into half time, not go, not having touched the footy. And that really does start to play on your mind a bit. And I think sometimes when you're having those sorts of days, you tend not to engage as much as perhaps you should. Now, here's Corns. Haven't seen a lot of uh, the Giants trying to switch it at all. I know there's the wind to contend to, but they haven't really switched it to, to this side of the ground as Corns' kick goes up towards Haynes. Spoil affected. Still at ground level, a chance for the Giants. It's picked up by Smith. Across the face it goes. It'll be a behind. Clear, 
So Garland to himself, yes. and it's another mongrel. Trent gave Reddit the best Play off the boot. Handball over to his co-captain, the Jacks combined. And that'll shh, the kick is out of bounds on the four. Is it for a second there, the umpire yeah. was going to... Oh, I think they looked at each other, the boundary yeah. umpires. Yeah. Who's in control of this ball? Okay. Right they worked it out. Here. Right the decision in there. Yeah. We almost hit our camera. Move it on. Falau. He went for that Hold one. On. Got a hand to it. Garland. High ball. The back was Hampton. Oh, that's an excellent mark. It's a terrific mark by Green. Oh, no. Off goes Rivers. He just peeled off quickly, although Green gave it too much air. Well read by Rivers. Courageous mark. Knew that Davis was coming. Sorry. Probably not the best pass from Brad Green. Certainly gave Davis a good look at it. Actually, he came around a couple of You're right on mark. Rivers will kick for his second. That's it, Jared. Colin! Colin! Three in a row to Melbourne. If he's successful, so he had to wait. Linden. James. The kick from Jared Rivers. He yeah, gets taken by the breeze. Kirtley Hampton. There's the full bank. He kicked to the defensive side. That would be the instructions for him. Play on. Big pack players. All still in play. A little bit stop start. Spoil comes from Strauss. First two at Spencer. Sylvia takes on Scully. Got past well enough to get it over to Bale. That is a perfect smother. Man who's played 300 games. Oscar Elliott's not getting free, but he got it out. Bale's got some strength. Bleas is in there as well. He gets up, takes on Scully. Plenty of players around the ball will have a ball up. Smothering's been the highlight. That's a beautiful one from it. That's great. Great Luke commitment. Yeah. Yep. As you heard from his brothers, effectively he is coaching here at the Giants so, and declared during the week that he wants to continue. Coaching. Kick out wide. It's a chase here between Trengove and Kennedy. Trengove did well. Garland and Haynes didn't give up on it out well. So good defensive play from the Giants. He played that well, Trengove, because he was done for pace. Yep. So he was able just to get some body contact, link arms, and then win the ball. Falau in the ruck. Just palming it down to Scully. Off his boot. And then he came through. Ball out now. Fine. Now, Adams just coming Fine. from the ground. He's a little bit holding Fine. his uh, right wrist. So he's got a problem, Taylor Fine. Adams. Right in. Step. Now, this is a bit of a tangle between players, and we ball it up again. Spencer punching towards the line. Beats it out. There's Adams uh, heading to the bench with a right wrist, I think it is. First to it, Corn. Cool. That's a good pick up from a big man. Green pulled the kick to Edwards. Not a lot of room for Tyson to move. He should take it out, and he does. First step was a good one yep. from Tyson. Just nice ran out of room. Too many Melbourne defenders closed in on him. Giles worked his way to the front. And it's a bit of a bit of a messy period here. Boundary throwing after boundary throwing. Well, they've already got an, they've got an extra midfielder around the stoppage at the moment. GWS because okay. Melbourne's got an extra defender. They've got Lyndon Dunn just sweeping back. But there's no spare defender for GWS. So they're using their extra at the contest. Now they send someone back to man up. Correct call too. Maddie Taylor Adams straight up the race with the wrist. Thanks, Lee. Here's a chance for Grimes. Doesn't get a good bounce. Corns had to go and won the free kick because he did. Let it go. And he loves a scuffle, does. Chadley. Push right out. Let it go. So too does Jordy McKenzie. Let it go. There's another scuffle just off to the side of that. Right there. Please involved with 
Moving on. Golds. Play on. It was Darley, in fact, but there's a big long kick in. A good mark taken by Howe. It's not hard to guess who it is when yeah, you see a big lead. Right. It's yeah. always the same man. Yeah. Well, that's pushing in the, the back. back. Yes, the 33 finalists for Mark of the Year are all Jeremy <laughs> Howe. Power tried to play for a downfield free kick. Flout jumped over the top. He's got blood coming out of his face too, Flout. He's going to come off. Yep. He's got plenty of claret on the face. Cop the knock. So some injury concerns for the Giants on the bench as we approach half time. It's just two minutes remaining. Haven't been blown away on the scoreboard, but uh, haven't looked like kicking a goal for quite some time. No, that's the problem. Getting it, uh, getting it forward of centre has become a real onerous task for uh, GWS. And when they do kick the ball long forward, it inevitably rebounds very quickly. 14 to 6, the inside 50s in this quarter. And that's just playing the game on your own terms as far as Melbourne's concerned. McDonald. Well, he ran himself into a bit of trouble. Now, how will this sit? Hampton. Well, he won the free kick. Well... Advantage is paid because Scully took it and he probably shouldn't have. That's the advantage, Paul. Yeah. Haynes. And it hasn't paid. It never looked like it was going to pay off. 50 metres oh. in the protected area. And now we've got 50 metres. So from a promising position with a free kick to Hampton, now we have Lyndon Dunn Thanks, boys. Still to kick it. from and the look, edge of the square. That wasn't, that wasn't player error either because no. the player didn't take the initiative. The umpire thought, well, you've got clean possession, so I'll just let it keep going. Yeah. Tap Scott, good mark, under some pressure from Golds coming in. Really good kick to the fat side of the corridor, yeah. that one. And that was the fitness as well. All Melbourne forwards, you can see, get right back quickly because yep. they could see the advantage of an open forward line and being able to lead into some space. But GWS, especially the midfielders, couldn't get back quick enough just to clog up the space inside Melbourne's forward 50. Well, this isn't what you want in game number 300, getting dispatched to the bench for a blood rule. So power comes off, and we've seen a few Melbourne players miss with this breeze from set shots. So it's just a question of, does Tapscott allow enough? He's only going to kick from 40 metres out. The distance won't be an issue. Does he allow enough to the right-hand side for the breeze to pull it back? Yeah, look, people might think it's very easy when you're kicking the breeze, and you should learn from other people's kicks, but things you've got to take into account. His players kick the ball differently. Some kick with different amounts of penetration, as in how forceful the kick is. Like that. And, uh, like that. and a lot kick it higher than others. And if you kick it higher, it's going to travel more on the breeze. Yeah. If you don't kick with as, not, as much penetration, it's going to travel more on the breeze. Comes down so, to your drop as well. A yeah. lot of players have that high drop. Absolutely. The players get right over it as well, who tend to kick better in the breezy conditions. Quick exchange here by Melbourne. Good hands. They work it all the way back to Joel McDonald. Turns himself in a circle, but the big switch is on to Tom McDonald. They've worked it all the way around the ground. McDonald, one way, then the other. Out wide, Trengove's target gets a horrible bounce. <laughs> well, you'd have to ask how Golds couldn't get to the ball there. Green kicks it to himself oh, almost. That's clever. That's clever play. Now he's just got a man up to kick to. Can they get one before half time? 14 seconds remaining. Edwards Don't decides panic. to stop. He's in range. He's in range. Kick siren. the goal. Exactly. Got to kick the goal. It's Actually, if the siren line goes, line. it's the best thing. It'll stop him from playing on. It'll stop on. him from playing on. Take his options away. Right. Now he's got to start this to the left-hand side, as we know. He took a great mark in the first quarter. Kicked the goal. Well, Margin's 18 points. This will be handy goal. A long way out. Long way out. It's going to travel quite a bit left to right. Got one metre forward, John. Sort of. So he should be running at the line that he wants to kick it to. One metre And he doesn't look like he's doing that. It's got to start in between the point post and the goal post. It doesn't. It's miles away. <laughs> Problem with his GPS is the player goes down and it gets up. There's no push and shove there. It's a bit bemused by that, Sean Edwards. So he wanted to go on with it a little bit. But uh, it was a promising move and Toby Green was involved once again. He just knows how to find the footy. Another eight disposals in that quarter for Toby Green. And they got two in a row there, the Giants, before Melbourne sort of steady, but some kicking for goal by Melbourne has kept the Giants in the game. It's 6-10-46 to 4-4-28, so 16 scoring shots to eight. So let's see what uh, the Melbourne captain thinks. Let's go to Lee Coleman. 
Jack, uh, difficult conditions. I don't think people at home probably realise how swirly the breeze is. Yeah, very swirly breeze going to one side. So, as you saw, a lot of guys missing goals early on. So it's just something you have to take into consideration when you're lining up. Pleasing, no 18-point uh, lead going into half time. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, you can't can't argue with that. We've come out in this interstate trip, and we're really trying to work on those interstate games and. We've got put on a good start. It's just a matter of finishing off now in the second half. Get that mouth sorted, mate, yeah. and enjoy the break. <laughs> Cheers, Thanks to Jack Trengo for chatting to us just before half time. And it is an 18 point lead to Melbourne. We'll take a break and return with more from Monica Oval. Jared Rivers though, and Rivers slots it through. Half time at Marnock Roval, it's an 18 point lead in favour of Melbourne, but uh, probably should be a little bit more. They haven't made the most of their opportunities. It was a tight first quarter, 4 4 28, the Giants. Melbourne 6 10 46. Uh, the only multiple goal scorer on the ground, Jack Trengove with two. And you can see Toby Green's played a superb first half. 18 possessions for the Giants. And Joel McDonald with 14 leading things for the Melbourne Football Club. Uh, if we have a look at some of the key differentials in terms of stats in the first half, most things are in Melbourne's favour. And you just think... well. 18 points probably doesn't reflect what they should have been able to do with the amount of possession they've had and where they've had the ball. Well, you look at the hitouts there, plus five to Melbourne, and that's led to their clearance dominance as well. But it's more over the second quarter where they're able to take control and take a lead in these stat areas, plus six in clearances. But in the second quarter, they won the clearances four to 11. So that was a that was a big win for the Ds. And inside 50s, plus 14, 15 to seven in the second quarter, Melbourne's way, and they had nine scoring shots, kicking three goals, six. They'd had a chance to really lock this game out. Bad kicking for goal. With it, the breezy conditions yep. have kept GWS in the game. Well, you can see Jade Rawlings uh, pretty demonstratively talking to his defensive group, and probably the way they want to move the ball out of defence and get the ball into the right positions to make kicking goals a little bit easier. It is moving around quite a bit, and you can just see some of the, uh, the decision-making has been wrong, because you've got to keep the ball in the right parts of the ground. Well, you see there some of the shots at, at goal and, and kicks in general play as well. It's very tricky today. Even the boundary umpires have had a lot of throw-ins. They've even had some, some trouble as well. Uh, let's look at uh, some of the key individuals that have got a little bit of the ball. Colin Silver, what have you made of his first half? Well, he played well in the first quarter and you'll see some of his players able to link up across half-back and get a couple of long inside 50s where Melbourne were able to score from as well, doing some tough work in the contest where Colin Sylvia loves to play his football. And look, he had nine disposals, but he's going at 100% effectiveness. So in these conditions, that's excellent, uh, excellent play. And you see the long ball in there where he was able to get the ball in long to Brad Green, who went back and finished the goal. And there's the link-up play there. He really likes to do yeah. that. He, get, he likes to get through the middle of the ground and then kick the ball as long as he can in, into the forward line. There's always going to be a lot of interest when Melbourne plays GWS about the game of Tom Scully. <laughs> yes. He was in the thick of things. They've been pretty aggressive towards him. He gave as good as he got, I think, eight possessions. Five of them con contested. Managed to get a goal on the board as well. Well, that's the first play of the day, Tom Scully. A big tackle there. He's had four of those. Some, some big tackles. A free kick against there, so he's unlucky. That's stiff. That's he did stiff. give away the 50-metre penalty, so he just needs to be careful when talking to the umpires after giving away the free kick. Every, had every right to be disappointed with that. Excellent mark, though. Made it up there for his team. Goes back and slots. One of the best goals of the game. One of the best <laughs> kicks. Look at that float <laughs> through. But, Jason, it doesn't matter how they get there. Six points for the GWS. No, it was a bit of a tumble pun. I've seen some better kicks <laughs> in uh, than our Boz kickers that are enjoying the sunshine yes. that's uh, across Marnica Oval as we speak. The kids are absolutely loving their moment in the spotlight at the moment. And we'll come back with plenty more from Marnica on the other side of the break. Welcome back to Monica Oval. Beautiful shot of uh, the church in the background, which sometimes the bells ring on a Saturday afternoon uh, during the game, but not today. Well, not so far, but it's half time and it's a lead of 18 points for Melbourne over the Giants, who have stuck in there. That uh, 16 scoring shots to eight, as I mentioned, going to half time. And 
We've seen lots of talent on display from the Giants this year. They've had seven nominations in the Rising Star. Hoskin Elliott there on screen, kicked five goals last week. Dom Tyson back in the side. It was a, it was a player that was taken early in the draft. This coming back for his eighth game. They've done well to stick out at GWS. I mean, if you, you take out a couple of key focal points like uh, Patton and also Jeremy Cameron, who'd make a difference, yep. particularly the way they move the ball forward. Uh, I don't think Melbourne's been particularly impressive. They've they've allowed GWS to stay in the game when perhaps they should have put a bit more space on them. And sometimes you create a rod for your own back when you do that. When you don't put an opposition away, they start to get a sniff. So it'll be uh, all important for GWS to get off to a good start early in this third term. Let's get to Lee Colbert at ground level. Yes, uh, Matty. Well, the wind has changed a little bit. It is favouring more of the left hand of the screen. And uh, interestingly, Jack Watts still not subbed into the game. You would have thought he'll be uh, an important player when he comes onto the ground. Set to go for the second half. And the bounce away, and Giles reaching over the top. Taken quickly by Powell. Me, me. First disposal of the second half. Out comes Falau. Good pick up. Yeah, he trapped it well. Chance for Tyson, the man we just spoke about. Oh, he ran into trouble, went the other way. Falau off the ground, that was clever. Out in front of Smith. They've kept it in somehow. Still got possession. Going backwards, Miles. Lost a fair bit of too slow, don't team. Go on, holding the ball. Advantage. Away you go, Melbourne. The counter attack. They did this a couple of times in the first quarter and looked good. Uh, Jones gets it from McDonald. Too far for Rivers. Trengove. Trying to keep it in. That was clever. Oh, oh, unlucky. Uh, Hold it. He's handballed it over the top of his uh, opponent to his own advantage. Just couldn't collect it. Well, yeah. Jones continued to come wide with the kick. If he had a look straight, straightened his run. He had Jetta running inside forward 50 all by himself. Wow. Jones couldn't keep that in. Got There's Jack Watts back in the side today as the sub. Don't hold here, guys. To play him forward, Jace, if you brought him onto the ground, or would you get him across half back and just get a touch? Uh, look, it's, a, it's an interesting one. Where do they need him? Probably distributing the ball, I think, and that's that's where their biggest problem has been. It's not so much getting it forward; it's uh, it's the way they're going forward. Tap Scott, McKenzie, Trengove going Good. forward in a positive fashion there to the top of the square, looking for Blees. Corn stands strong. By hand, gets it back from Davis. Has to be careful with this kick. And he is. Haynes just made a meal of it, though. Tom McDonald's kick back towards Jeremy Howe. Free kick. Shoving the arms. Oh, someone not happy. Just lost. The, he was looking for body contact. Um, Chad Corns didn't get it. And Phil Jay. Davis, well, he's just collected the head. Out. Yep. Might have been Chad in the background, you never know. Mark's yeah, I think he was disappointed that Play. Howe was able to get past him without yeah. any body contact. Right there, Chad. Kick one goal, two in yeah, that third in. quarter. In that second quarter, I should say. This one relatively easy. Oh, he's having a horror. That just Play. snuck in as well. His two goals have just got through, <laughs> but he's got them. Well, he's played quite well today. Jeremy Howe's taking a couple of big grabs. That one there, he actually had spilt the mark before Davis had come in to make contact, but the free kick, definitely there. Davis not looking at the ball and makes contact across the shoulders and the ears of Jeremy Howe as well. And keeps it low, Jeez. just hit it. Gets it through though. And an uh, important start for Melbourne in this third quarter to keep control of this game. Howe with two, so he joins Trengove as multiple goal scorers. And a margin out to 24 now. Giles trying to paddle it back towards McDonald, but he got it himself. John McDonald comes out, taken by Miles. Ducks under the tackle. McKenzie kept going. So too did John McDonald. Inside the 50 he goes, looking for Green. Got a fair bit of it, Davis. Just a little hand in there, Kennedy to Corns, pressured up. Now to Kennedy, over the top to Davis. They work it out well, the Giants. He hits it long. He wants a player to run onto it. It's a good kick. And Miles is there. He 
He goes down the line. Presenting for him, Edwards. Gotta be careful here. Go back behind your mark, thanks. Thank you. It's just stagnant forward, forward of the ball for the Giants. No movement, no blocking for each other to get out. Come out over the back to Giles, the biggest man on the ground. A floating kick forward by Devon Smith. Haynes comes at it. And it's boundary throwing next to the post. From the throwing. Spencer. Double tap out to Trengove. It might sit here for Bunting. And he's got it. He keeps it low. Play on the call. Play on. Play on. Donald going nowhere. Somehow. Threw it out in the end. I said somehow it came out to Sylvia. The umpire said it was a throw. Thanks, boys. You've got to make an attempt, but you can't just throw it out. So a chance here for Adams, who had a problem with that right wrist. You can see some strapping there just before half time. He's back out there. Another blood rule. Another blood rule. Blood rule. Let's go off. Okay, active bleeding. Melbourne blood rule. James Frawley. Active bleeding. He actually got that in the last contest mm. with Israel Folau. He got sandwiched and smashed right on his nose. There. Things don't seem to be too hectic in either no, box, do they? Not really. So now it's with Taylor Adams. Breeze will do something with it. We'll blow it right to left. He runs out right and then just hooks it left. And then it'll go out in the full. Terrible kick. It was. Where's Frawley there in this contest? Oh, there. Oh, yeah, yes. he, he gets the bump from behind. He got two. Uh, knocks his nose straight into the back of Israel Flower's head. Corns yeah. was up and down, and now it's out of bounds. You can yes. only look at throwing Chad Corns forward in this quarter just to try and provide a tall target. He's an excellent mark of the footy and actually provide will provide some work rate in the forward line for GWS. It's been a good battle he and uh, Jared Rivers. I mean, Jared Rivers has had eight possessions, kicked a goal, but he's had 15 possessions of his own, Chad Corns, and, and mopped up pretty well down back. Hoskin Elliott sprints from the ground, but the ball's right in his area, so effectively, they have one less. Anyway, and there's his man. Done. Kicked out wide. There's the contest between Corns and Rivers. Bunting gets in first and felt for the free kick and got it. It's an interesting point you make with coming off the ground. At times you do need to time it right. Yeah, just say, in that, I'll in be off in a second. Yeah, in that instance, uh, stay involved in the game and then when the time's right, yeah. make because a beeline for the bench. And his man ended up clearing the ball. One thing's for sure, Jason Dunstall wouldn't have run off at that time, gents. I can guarantee you that. I wouldn't have run off at that speed either. No, I would have walked off sulking. Melbourne free kick here. Thank you. Right tackle. So switch of play, McKenzie to Dunn. You outside. Out wide. It's not a bad kick to McDonald. We haven't seen a lot over this side of the ground. Oh, there they are. McDonald up high. Good spoil from Phillips. Down to McDonald, that's James McDonald, Phillips, the smother from Sylvia. It feels like we're at a game now because the players are yeah, right next to us. Is, we we haven't seen a lot of this. It's, they can reach out and touch them. <laughs> so boundary throw in. Into the sun it goes. Phillips paddles it down. Tyson. He kept hold of the footy. Lost it for a second. Sylvia came up with it. Strauss to Jones. Tried to get boot to ball. Scully caught on his right boot, but it'll float back into a dangerous position. Giles, Crum and Needle. Oh, Smith, mate, just 
I think he was thinking about thinking what he was going to do with it. He's thinking about his next handball yeah. over the top to Hoskin Elliott for sure. Tap Scott. Now it could hurt. Yeah, the rebound coming. <laughs> Sylvius kicks a good one to Rivers. Green leads hard for him. Strong, long lead. Hampton with him. Green. Hampton just got a hand to it. Kept his feet. Got to get past Bale, though. Power. By hand. They're not out of trouble yet, though, the Giants. Throw. Against Corn, so it'll be Rivers. Jeremy, Jeremy. Or Jeremy Howe. Come on here, lads. Howe's kick. He asked a fair bit of tap, Scott, yeah. who's acrobatic as he goes over the line. I'll go out. So they've been playing 10 minutes, and Melbourne have increased their lead by a goal. Rivers. Shark by Bale. And he's not going far. Interesting three weeks this week and the next couple for Melbourne players as well. There's no doubt that a few of them are being looked at pretty closely as to where their future lies. And sometimes you need to take a little bit of momentum when you've had a bad year. If you can just string a few wins together at the end, you can take a bit of momentum into pre-season. To salvage something out of the last three weeks, the Ds. Well, you look at the top of their list for disposals today. Joel McDonald, Lyndon Dunn, right Trengove and Howe, obviously uh, part of the big future. But they're, they're players that have are trying to get hold of the footy a lot and trying to at least keep their name in front of the selectors and the match committee. Well, you look at Jetta, Lee, Spencer, Tap Scott. They're probably the players that will be looking to finish off strong because they need, they're the ones who need to take that confidence leading into as Samo, that'll be their motivation, the fact that they've played good footy come the end yep. of a long season. He's been quiet, Sam Blees, hasn't he, after earning the NAB Rising Star nomination last week, kicking five goals and getting plenty of it. He's only had the five possessions to date. So, free kick for the Giants. Play on. Corn's under pressure. So too Darley. Phillips helped out. The young Ruckman did OK there. And he found his target nicely in Davis. No one to kick to, though. No one up forward. Has to wait. Oh, the barrel. Goes for the barrel. Tumbles it forward. Not much he could do there. Well, and didn't done. Yeah, he's better off kicking it along the ground. Yeah. Kick along the ground or change the angle of your kick. I know it would have gone more central, but it would have been to the advantage of his teammate. Yeah. Sylvia back through the middle to Grimes. Takes it. Plays on. 60 metres out. Doesn't panic. Doesn't have a shot. It drifted with the breeze for Bale. Who I thought, Bale probably thought, I've got this. Yeah. It's coming to me nicely. I just carried on a bit. I just misjudged it in a tad. Just from the boundary throw in for Melbourne to set up though. Rivers over the top was looking for Jones. He came through. James McDonald down low. Howe can't break the tackle. And we'll have another ball up. An odd matchup out here at the moment. You've got Toby Green, who's the leading possession getter for the Giants with 21. James Frawley's marking him at the moment. How? How around the corner? That's how. Three goals to Jeremy Howe. Well, smart forward play from Jeremy Howe. There's a little bit going on. Surprised to see Chad involved in that. He's unlucky that he just got caught up with that. <laughs> They'd be disappointed, John, to, to concede a goal in traffic like that at a stoppage. Well, that's why it's smart by Jeremy Howe. Just playing in front of his opponent. Didn't let there Corns, there. Didn't let yeah. Corns take front position at the, at the right time, which is there. Gets the metre required and then into Chad Corns. Good goal to uh, Jeremy Howe playing in front of Corns and Corns and Taps got exchanging pleasantries after the goal. Not much in there. No, very little, but Jeremy Howe, well, he's kicked three goals. He could have had four or five because he's missed a couple he probably should have kicked. First tackle high. He's the best forward on the ground at the moment. The Giants are away with a free kick to Giles. Scully on the left. Joel McDonald read it. Grimes came through to help out. Now out to Trengo, pulls the kick and allows McKenzie to run onto it. McKenzie, likewise, the short kick to Sylvia. Possession football, Melbourne. Trengo kept running. This is a really promising build-up. Short ball inside the 50. As soon as I said promising build-up, he pulls the kick straight over to Adams. And 
that kick is a dangerous one as well. Done a fumble. Haynes on top of him. Dunn paddles it through his legs. Edwards got past one, couldn't get past two. Haynes. Let's go to Lee. Well, I spoke to two young boys, Will and Blake Gordon, this morning, and their favourite player, Jack Watts. They've come to watch him play, and he's about to get on the ground right now. So the substitution has been made. Watts on. And it looks like he's going back. Plenty of cheer from the crowd too. I think the Melbourne supporters here happy to see Jack Watts get on the ground. He was trying to get on first, but in the end it was Watts on second. Oh, don't. You're not going to go with that routine, <laughs> eh? Seriously. That is great. Sorry. Who? And young Tom He's Couch has uh, actually been subbed out. Gents too, Tom Couch. Thanks, uh, Lee. Couch down. Watts is on, and Adams can't get free at the moment. Power. A little bit untidy that one. A bit of pressure for the Giants defenders. Davis back to power. He knew it was coming. Beautiful setup by the veteran. Whoops. Hampton went without it. And he's going to pay for it. Green keeps it low and Brad Green misses. Cheek. Curly Hampton. That was poor. He took his eyes off it. And even when he lost it, he just. There was no urgency to get back onto the ball. There it is there. First. Green lets the Giants off the hook. 31 points is the margin. Banging the goals on, but the Giants haven't scored for the quarter. No, nah, and it's been a long time since they've looked like scoring. That's the difficulty for them. Done. Thought about playing on. So a fair bit of the footy, as I mentioned. You, mate. Sets it up. Now can't get a run at it. Oh, big Giles. The man who's two metres squared. <laughs> Took the mark. Crowd favourite amongst the Giants. And he kicks it back. And leap and it beats everyone. It's over the back. Garland first in the race for the ball. Has time to settle up. Not his best kick though. Falau couldn't take the mark. Gee, if he did that away. Yep, he's got it there. Whoa! Handball's forward. And the Giants had gone forward. That's just a comedy of errors. Yep. They were away there, the Giants. And yeah, they're going to have another chance through Giles. He's having a good game. Corns and Green combined. Green, already a young man, but knows how to get the one-two. Just handled behind your teammate, so he has to give it back to you. <laughs> and Melbourne out to the other side. He's done again. He got the kick from Seller. Strauss wants it in the middle. Just reckon for mine... Melbourne have been too conscious about going laterally. Perhaps play a little bit more direct. Give yourself the opportunity to get some more goals on the ball. Yep. Strass, Trouse to Watts. Bad bounce for Tapscott, but he's gone back again. Flipped it out the back, and they'll get a kick soon, and now they do. McKenzie. How? Well, he had to bring the game alight. He's kicked three, and he's going to line up for his fourth. It's just a supreme leap, isn't it? He sets himself. Look at the spring. Up he goes. Oh, that's great. He's got a superb spring. Got a clip to the back of the head. That didn't bother him. He will win Mark of the Year, but if he did play for Collingwood, they've got 70,000 members, and if it was voted by the public, he'd definitely win Mark of the Year. I suggest he starts his own website. He's inside 50, and he's missed, so he's kicked three goals three. Uh, it's just every week he well, takes a big mark. He'd get plenty of hits. Yeah. It, how did I do that? Fired. Up he goes. No 15. Yeah, great to watch. I'm sure he's got one more before the end of the day too, I think. Melbourne are going to send it back in. Watts. Not a good kick. Oh, there, James. Send it back. Hoskin Elliott. Fire. Scully. They want to move it quick, the Giants. They'd want to be quick, though, because Edwards is in trouble. Fire. Back to Scully there. Saw a player running out wide and Green. Very good oh, pass to find him. Green back in board. Smith's in trouble. Runs the gauntlet. Handball out wide. They've got two. Advantage should be paid. Haynes. Green. You, handball. Probably one too many. High loopy handball. Yeah. They get you in trouble. Play on somehow, though. Done. And Garland to clear. Relieve some pressure for Melbourne. 
Very nice bounce for Jetta. And Sellers free. Can keep on going. One bounce. Handball's over the top. Oh, you don't need your hands when you're Jared Rivers. Bangs it through. Wasn't the best handball you've ever seen. It was his only option in the end, Jared Rivers. If he had tried to take that in his hands, he would have pushed it across the goal line. So he had to fly the foot at it and was able to hit it sweetly in the goal square. We'll see here, Salah running into an open goal. Davis has to leave Rivers. <laughs> That's a nice finish. It's a beautiful cross from Seller. The EPL starts this weekend. We'll see a bit of that. Cheers, mate. AFL's version of the alley-oop from <laughs> Seller over to Rivers and Rivers gets his second go. goal and it was just overdone at one end by the Giants and a quick rebound from Melbourne. Scully, clearance for the Giants still yet to score this quarter. No crummer there for this one either. Golds, now that's a free kick. It'll be Watts underneath that. Already with five disposals, Jack Watts. Play on from Sylvia. Chance here for the Giants. Adams working hard to get past Strauss. Sylvia to help out. Edwards. Has to be. Yeah, he went to ground. Sylvia over the top. Jones. And they finally win a free kick, GWS. He did well then, Hoskin Elliott, but watching him today, because he got the goals last week, he's pushing forward. A bit too quick rather than staying involved in the contest first, but did well to work back to win that free kick with the boundary throw. Jack Watts, you can see there, appears to just be effectively playing behind the ball, playing loose, filling up the holes. That's going to make it even tougher for the GWS when they go forward. Phillips the knock. Melbourne, first back. Strauss beaten to it though by Smith, who misses Corns with the handball. And if you. You're following the Giants, Devin Smith. He, he gets in the right position, but he just, it'd be hard to watch. Guess what? Corns is in a wrestle. Yeah, and really John, you got, it. you got your wish, John. You wanted Chad Corns forward. He's up there. He's there. More interested in annoying people, though, at the moment. <laughs> They're still, still going. going. McDonald, he could have got a kick there, Corns, but he's too interested in the wrestle. And they're still going. How couldn't take it. He's Chance here for Tyson. Couldn't get free. Left boot dribbles it up forward. Kick around the corner. Not 15. Play on ball. Watts with a big punch. Seriously, if you had an ISO camera on Chad Corns and Lyndon Dunn, they took turns walking on each other 14 times. <laughs> and neither would give up. It was ludicrous. <laughs> and now they're both hands on hips because yeah. they're spent from a wrestle. They're stuffed. <laughs> here you go, Melbourne again. That was the first score for the GWS. And this is Kennedy. Right there. Well. Darling to Green. Kennedy to Green. Look at that one oh. two again. That's just bad though. Right. Long kick, long kick. Oh, oh, he loves the handball. Tyson. Are they going to overdo it again? Scully. Around the corner, needs a kind bounce, doesn't get it. Toby Green just wants to handball a little bit too much. Too much. They had, uh, they had Chad Corns deep. He'd made space over the back. All they needed was a long kick. A little bit too much overuse of the footy. Hold on, guys. From the throwing. Falau with a big spring, trying to get it down to Hoskin Elliott. Can't be cleared just yet. Sylvia does now, gets plenty on the kick. Hampton, cleverly trapped. Handball forward, Green attacks it, but he's beaten to it by Taps. Got it, dives back in again. And he won the free kick because he was harder at it. Taps got looking for Rivers. He's just going to suit Giles. Power started to run already. Goes back to Davis. To Hoskin Elliott. Edwards, there's a runner in Darley. Kick out in front of Corns, didn't get a kind bounce. Watts, Frawley, no one really to kick to. And he used Lin Linden done out wide. And he ran back because he had no one to kick to either. And it's a good press here by the Giants. Forcing Watts back and he goes forward.
That's a couple of minutes of my life I can't get back. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> Did you just see that, that mucking around at half back? They finally get the opportunity to go forward. It's just a simple turnover kick. Jason Dunstall. His role as expert commentary. <laughs> Look, I, you'd, you'd have to sit there and say, well, Mark Neal would be frustrated with what he's seen. I mean, they should be putting this team to the sword and they're not. Here's a big mark by Spencer Jones. Goes well back to Watts again. He's just getting a power of possession playing loose down back. Yep. Joel McDonald. Well, he's already passed four teammates that have been out on the ground all day. Yep. In possessions. Now, it's a good decision by the umpire because Tapscott virtually ran into uh, Scully looking for the 50 and then kicks it straight into the man on the mark. Jetta with the tackle. Might be in trouble here. Might be in trouble. Yeah, he is in trouble. Dived on it, didn't get it out. Yeah, you're both doing it, Brad. So there. It was uh, Sam Daly underneath all that. You're both doing it. One. Jetta's kick. Top of the square. Over the back it goes. First to it was Bale. We couldn't get boot to bowl. Then he did. And finally rushed through. The Melbourne box. I didn't see that, Bill. Mark yeah, Neal. Not overly thrilled, I wouldn't have thought, with the way they're moving the footy. He's heading downstairs at two minutes remaining. Thanks, when you're ready. They won the quarter begin. by 20 points. Because uh, the Giants have only managed Dude. one behind for the quarter, and that was rushed. And I still like the way this man goes about his footy. Yeah, three big marks in this quarter from Giles. It's been excellent. Got plenty on that too. Big roost. Gave Phillips a chance. And it's out of bounds. Roll it in. Yeah, I didn't see that, Phil. And hold. Why aren't you both holding? Taken by Adams, pumps it up high. Edwards trying to get rid of his uh, opponent, Jack Watts, again. He's enjoying his time. And he's come on and had nine possessions yeah. this quarter yeah. and hasn't played the full quarter. And he'll end up with ten probably because it might come back in a minute. Although Melbourne, work it out. McDonald to Spencer, long ball. Davis just feeling for Rivers. Didn't really look at the footy. And again, they got that wrong, Melbourne. I mean, the last thing you want is a chain of hand passes ending up with your ruckman who delivers the ball forward. You want to get the hand, get the ball in the hands of the players that make good decisions and hit targets. And, and Mark Neal, I'm sure he's going to have a lot to say at three-quarter time. Tab Scott almost. Try look it out. Sun disappears behind the clouds as power gets the ball to disappear out of the defensive 50. Golds. 21 possessions for Luke Power in game number 300. Toby Green's been their best. He's had 27 and kicked a goal. Worked very, very hard. 22 for Lyndon Dunn, the best for Melbourne. Knock back towards McKenzie. In comes Watts again. Got the ball out to McKenzie. Who's... Oh, he's holding the ball. Take that, Jordan. Thank you. Stay there, Jordy. Toby Green, another possession coming up for him. And he just hits it up in the air and hopes for a big man to get it there. And Giles almost did. That's going to be holding the ball. Yep. No genuine attempt from John Giles. Back behind the mark, thank you. See John pleading his case. Say, give me a break, mate. Come on, I'm a rock, but I'm not supposed to do this. Trengo, or Grimes, I should say, and he pushes it wide to the boundary. See that views? We've heard the umpires say that a lot. You're both doing it. You're both doing it. At some stage, though, if one person engages first, the other person's got no choice but to get in a push and shove or a holding battle. So, to me, that would frustrate me as a player just hearing you both doing it because normally, if it's a backman and a forward, the last thing a forward wants to do is to be hanging on to a backman. He's trying to get away from it. Oh, 
So Mark Neal, well, as uh, Jason Dunstall said, will have plenty to say. They've won the quarter. They've only managed three goals, three. And the Giants only managed a point. So they got a comfortable lead on the scoreboard of 38 points. But they're not playing pretty footy. Oh, it's just slow football. They've had chances, especially in that third quarter, to get things going and get it going quickly. Jack Watts, at least, comes onto the ground. Has 10 disposals in half a quarter. Added some spark for the Ds. Three-quarter time from Monica Roval, Melbourne by 38 points over the Giants. So far here at Monica, a pretty open, uh, pretty close opening quarter was an eight-point lead to Melbourne. Then they stretched that to 18 points at halftime, and in a, in, a, in a quarter which wasn't great, it was three goals, three to one point in that uh, third quarter. They now lead a comfortable lead of, of 38 points from Melbourne, but a comfortable lead with some footy that you know remains to be seen whether they'll uh, well, they'll be happy about it. Yeah, Jason. I thought they played a pretty casual brand of football. They pretty much played arrogantly, thought they had time to do whatever they wanted. They yep. missed targets, and I reckon this is what Mark Neal is telling them right now. He's telling them a few home truths about where they actually stand as a team and and. How how they're playing and I reckon he'd say hang on a minute let's just keep it simple do the basics well and start improving instead of thinking we're better than we are and uh, and pretending we can control the footy like we've got it on the end of a piece of string and the good thing is I suspect Lee Colbert had cruised down somewhere near that huddle and snaked in close enough to hear what was going on Colby well you are very good at your job JD because that's exactly what he said no Hollywood football at this footy club he reckons off half back just uh, buggerising around with it Certainly not happy with the game style and put it right on his players and said, fix it up or you're out. Yeah, that's a fair comment because halfback is where they were making all the poor decisions, overusing the footy yep. and really just wasting it. Fix it up or you're out. I like that. I like it. So let's see if they do in this final quarter. Giles wins the knock. Trying hard for the Giants. Smith. Wider to green, so again they get involved, they win the clearance. Corns has gone forward, but he's not going to get there in time for that. So we'll have a boundary throw in. What we need is the GWS to get the first couple on the board here. Just Jason, spark Melbourne spark up. Spark it up a little bit. Smith again. Got through the tackle. And he's going to be paid for deliberate, is he? Did he take possession before the line or not? Did he take possession before the line? Well, then it's deliberate. Then it's deliberate. If Jack Scully did not take possession before the line, just wait. No, it's deliberate. Well, they're going to play deliberate. That's pretty tough. I reckon that's That's, tough. that's, that's not deliberate. No. That's not deliberate. He's, he's being he's tackled. Line. He's being tackled. No, and he's facing that way. No, he was painted against Scully for running the ball over no, the line, no, no, which is the wrong call. No, no he painted against a handball. And he said, if Scully if actually got possession. to it before it got out of bounds, it's not deliberate. But he's saying the handball wasn't to Scully; it was deliberately to go out of bounds, and that's just yeah. a tough decision. Okay. There's a look of disbelief. 50 metres. So uh, things going the way of Melbourne at the minute. So it'll be big Jake Spencer. Oh, yeah, thanks, yeah, no, didn't look like well, this could be interesting game. given a couple of kicks we saw from Jake Spencer earlier in the game. Lyndon Dunn. We had a shank before. Give it, yes. Yeah, he had a designated kicker in Dunn to the 50 metre line. <laughs> Shanked it himself oh, yeah. under the chest of Seller. Champagne football, Demons. Hollywood. Hollywood football. <laughs> it wasn't pretty, but it'll be a goal. Well, it should be a goal. We shouldn't get ahead of ourselves. But, uh, there's some confusion still, yeah. some chat with the umpires about A, the uh, the 50, and B, the early decision for deliberate out of bounds. But Seller kicked the first goal of the afternoon, comes up and kicks his second of the day and the first of the final quarter. Let's take a look at the deliberate decision again, gentlemen. Now, he's being pointed that way in the tackle, so he handballs it out. There's a little bit of space there. Scully's right there. He doesn't get there in time. Gee, that's that a tough, tough decision. Really tough. And there's your tumble punt. That goes end over end and goes about 40 metres tops. Spencer but Seller, the better. Seller reacted quickest. That's it. Of 
quiet day for Israel Folau as well. He started forward. He's had stints in the ruck. Now down back. Just the two hand passes to his name. Yep. Yet to get a kick. Spencer with the knock. In comes Green. Reacts first to it. Tumbles it forward. Not taken by Watts. Haynes. To Golds. Phillips. Jumping it. Tyson couldn't take the crumb. Dunn's had a good afternoon. Grimes reads it best. Plays on quickly. They're moving it well here, Melbourne. Spencer back to Grimes. Short ball. Presenting for him is Rivers. Back through the corridor he looks. He sees Jetta. Probably really didn't know it was coming to him until it was halfway there. And then Jetta to the fat side. Looking for Green. Green pushed off. Made good position. Couldn't take it. Blees has been quiet. That's not a bad snap from Sam Blees. All clear. Hard one in the wind. Very hard in the wind as Lee Colbert is sitting in the wind nose. Steve Clifton into the game for the GWS and Oscar Elliott, uh, five goal kicker last week, is out of the game. I put the beanie on too. <laughs> is it warm down there, Lee? Would you, would you need a beanie? It's negative eight at the minute. It is freezing. <laughs> Well, the sun has gone down, a bit of cloud cover over, yeah. and a very cold day in Canberra today. Hi, Andrew Phillips. Phillips will win the free kick. Now, Scully's running hard. Grimes getting back to cover him, but they need some hard run forward of the footy because too often they've had no options when they have got the ball. Phillips goes in the Giles direction. No surprise there. He's about the only man that looks like he can take a contested mark for them. Adams. Just a handball to Edwards. Sylvia strips him of the ball and then goes again. Tough work from Colin Sylvia. This is when I think the umpires, under instructions, let it go. Yeah. Wait for it to come out. But sometimes all it does is create a bigger pack. Yeah, and I think sometimes they leave it too long. Yeah. Because they don't want to ball it up. They're trying to avoid stoppages. Yeah, but which is, in, which is a wonderful the theory's good. practice. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And, we, and we like the way they want to do that. But sometimes it just makes a bigger pack. Giles, no one to kick yeah. to. He's going to kick it up in the air and hope that James McDonald's can turn it Or Phil Davis can come in from the back. And Phil Davis. I like that. And now he's he's run all the way down from half back. His man's gone with him, yep. Jared Rivers. But he was the one that attacked the footy and deserves a goal for that effort. Kicked five goals in his short career. Four of those for the Giants. Kick one for the Crows. Good attack on the balls. We see the replay there and. Davis, nice finish, and he gets one against the flow for the Giants. Well, it was excellent work rate, as you mentioned, from Phil Davis. Good leadership to be able to to be able to work down the ground. Just have a look at the top of your screen. Keep an eye on the top of your screen. There's Jared Rivers. There's and away Rivers. goes Phil Davis. He puts the arm up, lets him know where he's going, oh, and he's good just, running. It's terrific, hard running, and eyes on the footy. Yeah, that's great stuff. Well picked up by our cameraman on replay, Davis, hard running from all the way at half back, and then kept his eye on it and is rewarded with a goal. And the first since the second quarter for the home team. Clifton, the sub in. Miles trying to get it forward. Spencer standing in the way for Melbourne. Green. McKenzie wanted the free kick, felt for it. Ducked ahead. Yeah. Quickly moved off to Watts from Jones. Watts. Big long as Jeremy Howe was up. We've got about, how long have we got, Joe? We've got 16 minutes of play left for another Howe hanger. Oh, I think we'll see it, Matty. I reckon we might. In fact, can we get Lee? Can you get the instructions to the runners? <laughs> we want another Howe screamer. Not a bad mark at the other end by Tom McDonald. Big switch coming. Blees goes back into the defensive 50. Garland doesn't really want it. He said, no, go up the middle. Joel McDonald. Dunn. Blees. Too much on the kick. Howe's got some speed, but... James McDonald, the oldest man in the AFL, gets leg. 
like uh, Luke Power, the 300 game player, coaching here at the Giants. Powers handball to Tyson on his left. Yep. Hits it up high. Two on one, Phillips. Keeps his eye on it, though. That's had a free kick. Had to be. He had his back to the ball. McDonald. And it was a smart kick, even though it was a one on two. You got a Ruckman dropping back, a big tall. Put it up high, give him a chance. Yep. Oh, not oh, happy. Not happy at all. Not happy about the, the kick across from Blees? I mean, the, the switch was on and then they ended up just giving it back. Well, it was a kick to a 50 50 in the yeah. end and a short 50 50. Mm. And so. again, it was generated off half back, and that's what he made a big point of at three quarter time. Big Andrew Phillips has only kicked two goals so far in his short career. This for his third. Not bad. Good drop. Good goal. Two in a row to the Giants. Here they come. Here they come. Well, we look back to the first quarter and they were able to get a couple of one-on-one -on -one contests and kick some goals on the back of it. Now, supply like that has been pretty short from that time on with most of the play in the second and third quarters being at Melbourne's end of the ground. But once again, they get a contest within 25 metres of goal and they get a free kick on the back of it because it's an important long kick coming into the advantage of his teammate and he's able to create a good contest then get a goal on the back of it Phillips the goal kicker and the margin back to 33 points Seller in the ruck now up against Giles Toby Green now with 32 disposals Seller Getting past Adams, through it. Good tackle, really good tackle. Right back here. Watch Taylor Adams. Bit of spread here. Now oh, Adams yeah, can. On. Well, now he has to. Can move. that be play on? He hasn't gone over the mark at any stage. That's a really poor decision from the umpire that put him under pressure because he never moved off the mark. We'll take a look at that. I'm sure in a minute as the ball goes towards the boundary line. Now he was going to hand pass it to Power, but he was covered by a man. So you have a look at him. Okay, he's got the ball there. He's running forward. He, that's not play on. He hasn't moved, he hasn't moved off the off mark at any stage. Uh, that's, that's spot on, Jason. And Welcome all the umpire on. did was put him under unnecessary pressure. Or run forward of where the mark Correct. was set. That's Correct. Right. So he can run five metres forward towards the mark, pull up and go back if he wants. Yes. That's not play on. Phillips dishes it out. High ball up. Tough one to mark. Smith and Grimes. Grimes by hand, and they work it out okay. Good pressure. Oh, good pressure. He was out. Out of bounds before he kicked it. Well, they're sticking to their guns, which is good to see, GWS. Yep. It's been a long year, and a lot of the players have been tired, and they've put a few out to pass in their sheets, the just talking to them on the boundary line, and every time they rotate, he'd have a few words to the youngsters and just keep them going. He said, prior to the game, we've got, you know, six hours of footy or so left for the year. Let's get the most out of it. He just ducked his head again, McKenzie. Yeah. He just charged, rammed him with his head. Him. Charged him with his head. I'm not sure what you're supposed to do. We can't have players having to jump out of the way now because yeah. that just defeats the purpose of, of, of having a competitive contact sport. Done. Plenty of the footy. Oh, interesting kick. Sets it up. James McDonald. Joel McDonald comes in. And they got out of jail there, Melbourne. Frawley, and they should get a shot at goal here. Okay. Sylvia can kick it a long way, but the breeze is going to take that from right to left. It's all clear. And it's a behind. Yeah. It's actually one of the very few times that they've actually looked in board, kicked it in board, and then uh, had a really good shot at goal from a great part of the ground. Play on. Hampton to himself. Yeah. And then very wide. So he's just going to stay in. He stuck to his guns today. Hampton Green got a goal early in the game, had a couple of set shots in the first quarter as well, but it's kept him to only five disposals and the one goal, so big tick for Hampton today. From the throw-in, Phillips got front spot, Jones came rushing through and managed to get it forward 20 metres. I've got to say it, mate. Devin Smith on the sideline. Phillips over the top. Some good area work. Tyson. Won it out to Adams. Giles. That's a good mark yeah, under pressure. Good hands. Really good hands. He's taken some good marks, hasn't he? He has. He's been good all day in the air. Yeah, he's had, uh, this is his 18th disposal. 
He's had nine marks. Edwards got up. Green comes through. Trying to keep it in, Toby Green. And he couldn't. I'd like to get a uh, GPS reading on Toby Green. He works hard. Yep. He just works hard for four quarters. That's why he accumulates the possessions that he's got. Yeah, he's a hard runner, isn't he? Big engine. Well, the best get over 15k a game, he'd be over that. Well, Shark by miles. With what, the kick. what do you used to get, John? Between 12 and 15 as a forward. What? Out to Jetta. He takes his time and he puts it up. But he's set up. It was a tough one for Bale. Power worked him under it nicely. But the first kick here for Israel. Oh, and the Bronx. The Bronx cheer. Tyson. This is a promising move here from the Giants. Long ball towards Giles. Can he get there in time? A hard one for Ruckman to take down that low. Jones will come in. Clifton stayed with him. Good chase. Again, they look through the corridor here, Melbourne. Grimes over the top to Spencer. Gets it back. But he's going backwards. That's in there, right there. McDonald has it. It's Tom McDonald on the mark is James McDonald. Can he kick it to Joel McDonald? No. <laughs> Done. In the middle, Spencer. Jones, good vision from Jones. Seller, probably took a little bit easy there. Picked up by Bale off the side of his boot. Now it's a tough one for Rivers from there. What do you think, Lee? He's kicking into the breeze. With just the right hand post and uh, just hope like hell it comes back on the breeze. Uh, but he's going to go in board. Yeah, he's going to find a man it's at a, a better sloppy. angle. Yeah, a bit sloppy there. Yeah. Now on Bale. So Bale to take the shot. He's kicked a behind for the afternoon. That's a good shot of what's ahead of him. How will the breeze handle it? He starts it out. That's a good kick. Yeah. Oh, hang on. It hit the post. the post. Really good effort. Yeah. It was the right line early. Yeah, that kick set up Scully. Sylvia keeps it in. Good Smith tackle. gets it. Really good tackle. It's a good tackle, Smith. Nice and easy. Well done. Thank you. Devin Smith, it's his fifth tackle of the day. And he's a solid boy, Colin Sylvia. Yep. Player. He's taking the body with him. Really good. How? Running onto it. Play on, Play on. Crowd wanted the free kick for a throw. Taps got working hard. Yep, yep. Adams is going to run it across the face of goal. Going to take a risk right. and push it out yeah, wide, yeah, yeah, yeah. looking for Davis, who ran hard to get there. Now he looks in board. Got Scully working Scully real hard. Really hard line. to run for him. But the breeze gets hold of it. Can Scully keep it in? He might, you know. He has. He got a kind bounce. 70 metres out. Spots a man leading for him. And Kennedy couldn't take it. Watts, rebound coming quickly for Melbourne. Grimes, and he's not sure. Bail again. Green's his target. And strong hands from Brad Green. Hampton did okay, didn't chop the arms. And then he tried to pinch it off. Claiming man in front now. <laughs> he did well because he turned as he went back yeah. with the flight of the ball, Hampton. That's a lie. Hasn't Five been uh, a big day for Brad Green. Just he's, the five he's found kicks. it difficult. Yeah, five kicks and like a good forward, no hand passes. He's got one goal, two to his name. And for a left footer, probably not an easy kick, but let's keep low. See, see if he can Brad. kick it at the right post. That's it. Good run up at the right post. Coming. Oh, came after the post. Yeah. It's been an interesting challenge for the players dealing with the breeze when kicking for goal. 10 goals, 17 for Melbourne. 27 scoring shots to 11. Played the Gold Coast a couple of weeks ago, won by six goals after leading by seven goals at quarter time. 
And it's a similar sort of margin at the moment, and he's run over the line. So, Buntine over the line. Lee? Just watching Chad Corns. His day uh, is over. He's getting some ice now on his lower leg. He's wrestled with everyone uh, on the ground almost, Chad, so he deserves a little bit of a break, the big fella. What's the punch? Yeah, four rush, Automatic free kick. Thanks, Chad. Kick it in. So look Second at the players out, around yeah. the square. There's a lot of players waiting for the ball to just somehow come out. John Wells got half a kick away. Green on top of Hampton. But he got there. Hampton came through. Golds got rid of it pretty quickly. Power swamped. Fine. And we'll go again. And this could go for a while. Luke Power with 23 disposals in his 300th game. Toby Green, the leader on the ground with 32. Giles squeezes it out to the boundary line. Mark Williams, just, just the fan there, on, off, <laughs> on, <laughs> off, that's gold. Oh. He's got his own personal fan that he takes to every game, <laughs> at the moment he's deciding whether to leave it on or not. And it really looks to be exciting him, doesn't it? That is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go on, Chocker, give us a press. <laughs> go on, hit it. That is his own personal fan in the team colours. So he's thinking about it. Cold day in Canberra, probably not required. <laughs> That's hilarious. Virgin on the eccentric, isn't it? That's what we need up oh, here. That's why we love Chop. Giles still working hard for uh, the Giants. But it's, it's an ugly piece of play. It's just been, uh, it's rolled around from the goal with hardly any kick. Sheed's barking instructions from the sideline. Giles trying to do something out of midair. James McDonald can't get past John McDonald. Thanks, boys. Well, there's James Magna, travelling emergency for Melbourne, doing a workout on the bike, not getting a game this weekend, so doing some work in the rooms while the game's going on. Still hard to get free, and Miles does it. Tumbles it forward. Kennedy just muscled out of it by Tom McDonald. He hasn't played a lot of footy. I've been impressed with what I've seen with Tom McDonald this year. He's only played the, the ninth, or this is his 20th game. Still only a teenager himself, and he plays with a bit of poise. Interesting approach by Melbourne allowing Magna to do that. You think he would have completed his work early this morning so he could come out and watch the team and the way they go about playing the game today. Maybe he's cold. <laughs> Maybe he's wanted to go in there just on I'll his just own. Warm up. Here's Green. He's not cold. He's always hot. James McDonald going back to Phillips, who was dancing in midair, said, give it to me, and then he lines it up, kicks inside 50, spoiled coming, first to it should be the Giants, Edwards overran it though, and away goes Jetta, one on one, Seller and Falau, how does it bounce, Seller's got it now, Falau has to go again, Seller back, How? 50 metres out, too far out to kick a goal, needs support, Gets it from Jetta. Another tumble kick forward. Touched off the boot. Hampton attacks it. Good tackle by Green, though. He's going nowhere. First two actions. Two actions. Advantage pain. Oh, how is that advantage? 
think it was a situation where Tyson didn't actually know whose free kick it was, so yeah. he just picks up the footy. But about. the other thing is the... He took it and stood still. It, it, it's, it's supposed to be the players that take the advantage, but yeah. the umpire's calling advantage because they see it in a teammate's possession. That doesn't necessarily mean he's taken the advantage. Yeah. Jones going back to Frawley. To Watts. And how does this style of footy relate to what Mark Neal was talking about at three-quarter time, Jason? Yeah, look, we've seen a couple of passages which has been better, but too often it's just been about waxing down back and then messing it up. Well, Watts somehow got out of trouble there. The tackle from Haynes didn't stick. Hampton couldn't get a hand on it. Power to clean up. Hold in. I don't think he's going to go home after giving the team a glowing report, Mark Neal, with his performance today. Seller knocked down in front. Scully couldn't get free. So many players around the ball. Very hard to get anybody to get free. Five minutes remaining. Melbourne Box looking on. Lee Brown on the foreground. I reckon if he had a pros and cons list, that the cons list is going to be considerably longer than the pros. A bit longer than the, uh, the uh, flight, flight list on Con Air. <laughs> <laughs> what are the pros that he can see then, Jason? I think the game of Lyndon Dunn's been good. Yeah, 27 disposals. Yeah, Grimes well and Trengove's continue to get hold of the footy. Yeah, but, you know, on top of that, not a hell of a lot of all else. To be, to be brutally honest, it's just been a... A thereabouts performance. That's Jeremy yeah, Howe against the only other individual that has... He's got three goals, Jeremy Howe. Three goals, seven in disposals. Yeah. At least he looks like he he breaks out of... Oh, that, is, that is a high tackle. Yeah, that's no He's got some explosive Linden. nature about his game, Jeremy Howe. Take him out. Linden, take it out, Linden. Linden, come on out, mate. Two metres inside. A lot of talking going on. Jones from inside 50 and... He got that to go left to right, so it must have been an old ball. That was the ball drop, I think. Yeah, yeah. He's hit the belly of the ball. Yeah. Here's Adams. He hugs the boundary, looking for Giles to come late. And he did. Taking some good contested marks. Oh, I love him. I've seen him a bit this year. I think he's great. Jones. Crumming, Clifton running him over the line. Hold it, getting tackled over the line. From the throw in, both Ruckman there for the Giants. No crummer though. McDonald to Strauss, back to Tom McDonald. Now off the outside of the boot, it's not a bad kick to Rivers. Sylvia's handball over the top. Grimes doesn't have to change stride, straightens up and puts it through. And a goal for Melbourne. They will get the ball back into the middle of the ground. The Demons in a dangerous position, but then get some good overlap football. Normally they go down the line from this position, but the run of play from the stoppage and a good kick by McDonald created that. So Rivers coming straight up at it, and there's the overlap play here. Sylvia involved again. Over to the co-captain. Open goal, easy for Melbourne. Hey, hey, hey. Just bring, hey, guys, don't give a free kick away there, all right? Just wait. Goal to Jack Grimes. That's his first goal for 2012. Here we go. So that's something for him today. And he's had 24 disposals to go with it. And it's the second goal for Melbourne in the quarter. So two goals each for the quarter. As Giants have got a chance here. Green always tries to move quickly. Umpire goes down again. Kick up high. Giles caught behind there. Garland in front. Coming through Haynes. Tried to get the handball off to Tyson. Still a chance, Giants. But they've got some numbers, but Sylvia strong over the ball. Darley misses Smith. On the up, Scully. Got his kick away. Who's going to get there first? Watts past him. Haynes. Play on the call. Green slipped it sideways to James McDonald. That's how you do it. Jimmy Mack for the goal.
Well, that's three goals to two in favour of GWS in the fourth term, so I think that would please Kevin Sheedy as much as anything. The fact that they've stuck to their guns. You can just see James McDonald, he's a tireless worker, and he's another one like Luke Power that he's going to set the perfect examples for the young kids about the right things to do and the things that you don't want to do. He's a percentage player and he works hard and he gets a little bit of reward there. Goal number 60 in his 262 games. James McDonald, last year in the cattle industry, driving thousands of Ks a day to now playing elite level footy again. I think he'd take that. Oh yeah, turns 36 in October. Yeah, I reckon another pre-season and a hard year slog. Sounded a lot better after he did to sit in a truck yep. day after day smelling, you know, a little bit of livestock. <laughs> livestock, well put. Oh, what? Almost uh, went again. What's now? Not sure. Oh, this is this Tyson. Is millionaire stuff. Hollywood. Clean it up or get out. They're just mucking around with it. That, that's the frustrating thing, I think, from Melbourne's perspective. Tyson to send it up high. Big jump from Edwards. Green's there. Clever handball to Smith. Smith, does he curl it enough? Oh, he does. Well done, Devin. You've done some good things today and you deserve it. How good is Toby Green? How good was the handball? That's released James McDonald in the play before that to create a goal and releases Devin Smith on this, this occasion. Here's the turnover from Jack Watts. Just needs to go along, trying to pop it into space for McKenzie to run onto. Didn't work out. Long ball back in. Toby Green involved. Here's the handball there. Great release. What a performance by Toby Green. 37 disposal. That's at PB. The last three weeks, 35, 31 and 37. In between that, 29, 30, 34, 31. Oh. And a quality hand pass there that allowed Devin Smith to snap a good goal. No, I reckon, no teenager uh, gets the ball more than him. No. I've got to tell you, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in the Melbourne rooms after the game. Well, they're going to lose this quarter. But again, it's the ball coming off half back. And what that tells me is that they're not committed to the system that they're trying to implement in terms of bringing the ball forward because they're making it up as they go. They continually pick wrong options. They chip, they finesse with the ball, and they turn it over. Well, I think we'll find a fair bit out with the way they sing the song after the game, Jase. He's hurt himself, Toby Green. Yep. And uh, he's going to call it back. Keep an eye on Toby Green. He's just... Hopefully just a stinger, just a dead arm. And he's looked over towards oh, the... Oh, yeah. Towards the trainer who's headed out to him, or physio. Mine. There's only 50 seconds to go, so I think Green's just decided to pull himself back to the goal square, and that'll do me. But he's had 37 disposals, kicked a goal, set up about five. Kick out of the pack. He might have to go again here. Oh, he'll kick this. He has. <laughs> kick the goal over his head. I tell you, it's a green day. <laughs> That's just a freakish performance. He's gone forward for a rest just to fit in time. He's just had the shoulder crunched. Straight back into the action. This is a young man with a lot of skill. And, and as importantly as the skill is the attitude and desperation with which he wants to succeed. And he's shaken off the trainer. The quick kick out of the pack. And just watch this. Uh, now, Watts is what, four inches taller, yep. stronger. Second goal. He's had plenty of the ball since coming on Jack Watts, but, you know, he's turned a few over, and you look at defensive efforts like that, these aren't things that Mark Neal's going to be particularly pleased with. And five goals in the last quarter to the Giants. And just two for Melbourne. Yep. And Toby Green with 38 disposals and two goals. And the margin now is 25 points, so it was 38 at three-quarter time. Miles, it ends up with Clifton from Phillips. Out wider, Adams got a handball off, power involved, long ball in, can they get one more? Giles, Green is there, Giles down to Green, couldn't get boot to it, it was almost his third. Have they got one more chance at it? I don't think so. I reckon he made a mistake by flying. If he stays down, he yeah. probably... 
gets the crumb and kicks it. And kicks the goal. Still working hard, but in the end, whilst it won't, wasn't pretty from Melbourne, the fact of life is they've won, and they've won by 25 points, and they get their fourth win of the season. But a good finish by the Giants made it a lot closer on the scoreboard, and they tried hard for Luke Power in his 300th game. But Melbourne probably should have kicked a few more goals. They've won by 25. Well, that last quarter was good by the GWS inside 50s 11 to 10 winning the quarter great play by them in the end well they got out to a 45 point lead and they didn't give up they came back and kicked the last three goals of the game so Toby Green excellent 10 disposals in the final quarter but uh, I guess the story is Melbourne have won yep. but how what will Mark Neal report about how he feels about his team went about playing their footy. Yeah, he's not going to be particularly pleased and uh, got the former Melbourne players in James McDonald and Tom Scully involved so there'll be plenty of uh, how do you do's after the game but let's head back down onto the ground and catch up with Lee Colbert. Yeah, thanks JD. Uh, Jeremy, you came here, you conquered, you actually had a win but uh, 11 goals 18 I suppose is not exactly the way you want to kick them. No, nah, that's it. Oh, we had a big focus to come here Want to be uh, getting some uh, good wins on the away. It's practice for us leading into next year, so to get a win on the away, look, it's, it's great. But uh, yeah, obviously you can see we the win conditions played a big factor in our kicking, but still, uh, no, we're happy with the win. Was it frustrating at times for you being forward? We uh, we talked a little bit about the guys finessing the ball through the, the back half of the ground, and I, I know your coach probably wasn't that happy. But as a forward, you'd want it just in there, nice and quick, and give you a real chance. Yeah, that's it. Especially on days like today, it's a bit windy. We would have liked to just get it in there a lot quicker and. Uh, as we got it in there and got it in long, we proved that we could hold it in there, and that's when we were scoring. So that's something that we're going to have to look at and uh, yeah, get into the mids and get them to kick it in there. So. <laughs> Tell us about this marking caper, mate. Uh, you've just uh, you've gone to a whole new level. We know you, you're a jumping jack, but you can play in front and behind. Is it something you've been doing for you know since you were a young fella? Oh, I suppose yeah, marking's always been a strength of mine. I've just been out of. I don't know, I suppose just jump that little bit more than everyone else, but uh, no, nah, I've played in my strengths and try to get a few grabs, and uh, yeah, if I grab a few, it's good. Well, we want to see you have your own uh, Twitter page or something just set up just of all your highlights, <laughs> so uh, get in there, enjoy the win, and uh, all the best for the rest Thank of you. Thank you very much, boys. Thanks, Thanks. Cheers. Thanks. Three goals to Jeremy Howe, we should open it up, howe.com, and just head there <laughs> and just watch hangers, but he was the best forward on the, gra on the ground for... Uh, Melbourne all day, but Luke I like Power. This. I like this, Matty. A lot, yep. Look, a lot of this now is going to be about Luke Power. Look at the Melbourne players. There's a show of respect, forming yep. a, a guard of honour on one side, the Giants Coaches players well. on the other, and there you've got Phil Davis and, and Big JG. Giles yep. cheering him off. 300 games for Luke Power. Unfortunately for him, it wasn't a win, but they did finish off well for him, and they got within 25 points. And so Melbourne have done the right thing to show signs of respect. But they got the four points, Melbourne. They've got their fourth win. They've got an away win. They've defeated the Giants here at Monica Oval on a Saturday afternoon. Final margin, 25. He's an All-Australian, and we congratulate Luke Power on becoming uh, one of those rare players in football to play 300 games. And through Adams, Scully quick hands to power. No real advantage just yet. How spectacular over the top of power. Perfect smother. Man has played 300 games. And they tried hard to loop power in his 300th game. Show of respect, forming yep. a, a guard of honour on one side. The Giants Conches players well. on the other. And there you've got Phil Davis and, and Big JG. Giles yeah. cheering him on. A personal milestone for Luke Power. And the story of the day, as far as the football was concerned, it was an eight-point lead by Melbourne at quarter time, out to 18 at half time, and then it was out to 38 at three-quarter time. We probably thought Melbourne would really kick on and blow them away, but five goals to two in the last quarter saw the final margin at just 25 points. How? Three goals. Green was sensational for the Giants. Two goals and 38 disposals. Linden done a pretty good game off half-back also for Melbourne. And I guess um, it's one of those funny ones uh, in footy. You, you take the win, but you're not that happy about it. You're not that happy about your performance. Well, that's exactly right, especially with the end. If, if Melbourne had gone the other kicked way and kicked five goals to two in the last quarter, Mark Neal probably walks away disappointed with an effort in the third quarter, but overall happy with the result in the end. But with it finishing the way it did, the players would be locked away straight away and yep. they'll be having a stern talking to. Well, this is what happened as they came into the rooms. There was no singing the, the, the club song. It was... 
get in here please boys and we might have a chat because I don't think Mark Neal saw much out there today that he was particularly impressed with. Yeah, and I guess from a Melbourne fan's point of view, if they're looking for the song, there hasn't been one yet. It's on pause, Jason. Mm. It's still getting you, chatted to. If you're a Melbourne fan, I don't know that the song's going to be the highlight of your day today. I reckon you're probably going, gee, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. Is it a case we just don't sing it? Well, I'm sure you'd, you'd sing it. You've, you've got a victory. It's part of what you, what you, what you have to do. Surely they walk no. out now and, and sing the song and, uh, and get it going for, for each other. It's a win today, and they haven't had too many this no, year. It's not, not often you see players smile when they come out of a room after being summoned in <laughs> early after an ordinary performance, do you? I reckon they've been, de been delivered a few home truths. Yeah, and for the Giants, I mean, they, they've got a few numbers down, but they battled hard. They didn't give up. Love the way they stuck to their yep. task. I thought it was a committed effort. And to salvage something out of that last quarter when I think most of us expect them to fall away and get pumped, I reckon it was a pretty good effort. Toby Green. Absolute star, star of, the, yeah. of the game in the making. Another 38 disposals today and two goals to go with it. They're trying to tell us that uh, the Rising Star's done and dusted, that Talia is going to win it from Adelaide. Toby Green gets up there again. Jeez, his last month's been pretty good, hasn't it? It's been Played fantastic. a lot of good games. Yeah. All right, well, it's been uh, an interesting day here at uh, Marnica Oval. Melbourne have got the four points. They've got their fourth win of the year, but uh, they've done it only by 25 points over the Giants. Thanks for your company. We'll see you next time. Maybe we'll get the song. <laughs> This has been a Fox Footy production.